Daryl and Camilla are a boxing match made in heaven. It's not Something funny, like Daryl. This is our wedding. Like, we're talking. And you can stand on the ring. And the wedding plans have them down for the count. I've got so much stuff going on. What are you going to do? Jane Deus Hinch is a wedding planner extraordinaire who has worked with a lot of tool. But this time, will Jane be able to manage one very big one? Where the f is the wedding planner? Exceptionally rude. For Camilla, Daryl was a regular knight in cheesy armor. I tried to pick up her friend, and her friend had a boyfriend, and she said no. And Camilla wasn't too jazzed about being second fiddle. I accidentally gave him the right phone number. But they obviously made the right connection somewhere along the line because they now have a young family. You have the baby crying. Because she's seeing mommy's efforts. Too. Trying to plan this wedding with a three-year-old and an eight-month-old, it's like a complete disaster. What's been done so far would be that um, the engagement that's swell, because the wedding is a whole 10 days away. I'm taking care of the wedding ceremony. It's going to be an outdoor site. I should get out there, I guess, one of these days to take a look and plan it better, but we got time. And I'm like, well, what happens if? And he's like, don't worry about it. I just threw her out after a while. <laughs> you name it, we argued about it. And Daryl isn't the only one Camilla is at odds with. My mother is inviting half the world. How is the wedding plans going? Girl, I'm so excited. <laughs> Diane! No, my daughter is getting married and I want you to come to her wedding. Oh, really? You coming? Yes, I'm coming. What? Good. What about your sister? Yes. The whole family? Man, this wedding list is going out of hand. Her mother's inviting everybody under the sun. Sometimes I feel I'm getting married. <laughs> I really don't feel that this is my wedding. Nothing's on time, nothing's done. Um, I'll be even lucky if the, the priest shows up. But they have done something right. They've sent out a wedding SOS to the best in the business, Jane Deus Hinch. Jane is a British wedding planning superstar who's here to grant Daryl and Camilla three wishes to save the day. And Jane's boy wonder Michael is also here to assist in the magic. Oh, for goodness sake. But this wedding isn't the only thing all mucked up. Oh, my shoes. Hi, Jane and Camilla. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I got your wedding SOS. Yes. What seems to be the problem? First things first, Daryl's late, as usual. So he's always late? He's always late. My first impression of Daryl, turning up late, on the phone, exceptionally rude. Kitch is good, so wash all this. Okay, let me give you a call back, all right? All right. Hi, Daryl. Hi, Jane. So nice you could make it. Yep. So this is where you're getting married? Isn't it beautiful? And what happens if it rains? Pray for it to stop raining. I'm not talking to an adult. Next problem? I guess it'd be the amount of people. As of last count that I really heard of, it was about 2.15 or 2.08 or something in that vicinity. Why don't you know who's coming to your wedding? The list has been uh, growing because um, my mom's inviting all of her friends. How many more unexpected people could join us? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You, you know, you're in the wedding game. You know how it goes. Daryl and I, we're going to be the best of friends. Have you got a DJ booked? Yeah, I got a DJ. But no playlist. Stretch. And is it going to turn up? Of course. He's a buddy of mine. I went to school with him. Have you paid him a deposit? But actually, I did put a deposit. I bought a case of beer. Is this a wedding or a pub crawl? Are the guests having programs when they arrive? Well... We've actually got the program. Yeah, we were thing supposed to call done. him and meet him, man. But damn, yeah. he didn't even come back. And Are you having a wedding rehearsal? We have one that we wanted to set up for the Saturday before. This is something worse and worse by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, for Saturday. I think it's assumed. Yeah, though. I think it's assumed. Yeah, they pretty Never much... assume. That's very true. Okay. Never assume. It just solidifies what I've been feeling before. Like, you don't have enough time and so many things to do. Everything could be done. Everything will be all right. Of course. After the first uh, successful sit down, Jane gets the couple up and running and she's set to dig in her heels. Guys, I refuse to get these shoes damaged. I'm going to change my shoes. Metaphorically, of course. Heels do not work. OK, this is where the cars are all coming in. We've got 200 guests. We could have 100 cars here. Right. There's your first problem. We're getting out of the car. We have dress. We have veil. We have shoes. We have attendance. Right. And we start the walk. And I can see that this is going to be an interesting walk. Yeah. You see, Daron? We have lots of stuff. 
sticks, we yes. have brambles, we have a few thorns. Who's holding the dress, or is the dress dragging in this? What are you going to do? It's going to work itself out, you know? If it's raining, mm -hmm. can you picture yourselves up there with umbrellas? Maybe a beach-style kind of big umbrella. It's not funny, like Daryl. This is our wedding. Like... I'm serious, well, OK, I'll stand on the umbrella, and you can stand on the rain. <laughs> I'll be all right. With a week to go, we need, we need a plan. I don't think she was too impressed. No, I don't think she was impressed with you either, Daryl. And where to start with this one? While Jane jets off to work out a plan to save this disaster, Camilla's mom works on inviting the other half of the world. I'm calling you right now to find out if it's too much people. I mentioned it to her, and I let her know how I feel. Mom, we're at 200 already. That's enough. She heard me. I don't think she's doing anything about it, but I think she's heard me. With my mother, I feel like she's getting married, and it's not me. Well, Camilla's fairy godmother is here to turn this frown upside down with her plan of action. And she's brought reinforcement. Her assistant, Michael. My wonderful assistant, Mike, is going to put the things here up on the board, OK? We started at the ceremony site. We've got to assign the cleaning of it, the grass cutting, that's just one big issue. Walking down the aisle, this music, this is on CD. Yes. Daryl, is this yours? Yes, but I need to get the CD. Once I get the CD, boom. The guest list. Nothing is going to work without that magic number. Mum, who have you invited? How many people are we waiting for replies? It's just going to be like a catalogue of horrors because you don't know how many people are coming, you don't know whether they're sitting, you don't know... Oh, it's just, it's just huge. Got to organize that car parking. You are joking. Meeting that we're going to have with the pastor. The running order, we've got to get that typed because you'll need to do a proof and then the actual printing of it. That's sheet one. Yeah, sheet oh, one. We've got work to do. <laughs> this wedding, my goodness me, where do I start? Hair and makeup. That's my favorite. Go book hair and makeup so that I know you're going to be the most beautiful bride. So all of this has got to happen in a week. But as you know, I can give you three wishes. You think about it and you tell me what your first wish, what you need the most help with. Make every wish count. Right now I'm feeling anxiety. It's getting close to the wire and I don't know if things are gonna come together. With just days away to the wedding, they waste no time and cash in their first wish. We need you to help us arrange our guest list for us. Get the number. We need that number. So, yes, I'll help you with that wish. While Camilla absorbs the harsh reality, Daryl just soaks in his smugness. Well, he's a little disorganized. A little? A little. Oscar could do better. Camilla and Daryl are getting hitched in seven days, and they need all hands on deck. But the bride is about to abandon ship because her mom is overloading it with passengers. Are you coming? Yes, I'm coming. And she's ignoring Camilla's cries for help. I feel like... She's getting married and it's not me. So Jane Dea's Hinch is here to save the day with three wedding wishes. First wish, put a stop to the mother of a bride who's creating a mother of a guest list. I'm feeling really worried about this wedding. And if I'm worried, they certainly should be worried. When Camilla arrived, she was so down. Camilla, you've got some concerns. One of my main concerns is people were replying after the RSVP date and we're still accepting them a week to the wedding. The culture says that we should be laid back and we shouldn't hustle. And If they don't have the decency to write back or even call us or whatever, why are we catering to, to these people? We don't have the kind of money just to be like, oh, OK, sure, yes. come on. It's too expensive. One or two we can live with. Mm -hmm. 20, we can't. I've got the kids. I've got the house coming up. At, I'm on maternity leave. And it's like, oh, but they're, they just told me today that they're coming. That's another, like, three, four people. I'm glad it's come to a head. And I'm glad it's today and not next Saturday. When I was asking for the help last week, I wasn't getting it. Who are you asking? My mom and Daryl. OK, so now everything that you want, you tell me, because we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. The table plan, the place settings and everything, it will all come from the magic number, so we don't have this problem. Mm -hmm. Anybody that hasn't replied, we give them a phone call. It's a yes or no. I'm just excited to have a child like her, so I want to celebrate with my friends. Camila, mm -hmm. tonight you'll have your list. You'll have all of my numbers. OK. Have I granted your first wish? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what we want? It's the wedding. Thanks, Jane. You're the greatest. So that's all clear. But now Jane moves on to another problem, Daryl. I'm going to keep pressing that button till 
he gets he gets the message. So after Jane grants Camilla's first wish, they walk her through the reception hall, and then Jane walks them through the wedding. Picture yourselves here now. Here's all your friends and family gathered here in front of you. At the end of the meal, everyone goes fantastic. So now, would you please welcome onto the dance floor. Daryl does not know how to dance. You've got 200 eyes looking at you. I can still pull out a, a move or two here or there. Daryl, show me. Come on. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Tell me you're not going to do that for three minutes. No, we can cut it down to a minute. That's too fast, Daryl. <laughs> oh, don't drop it. OK. Thank you. And back. I was hoping to impress you, but I don't know, maybe on the day. Everything's on the day. <laughs> 200 people watching. I think we really could work on the dance. It's our special day, remember? If I pretend I can broke the... my foot. No. No, no, no. We need some dance lessons. I want us to look really good for our first dance and on our special night, so I think it's a really worthwhile wish. Now, think of everything that you've got to do with the wedding. Are you sure this is what you want to do? I don't know why she would request it, but she said yes, so we're sure about it. OK, guys. Yeah. Let's boogie. Dance lessons. That's pretty good when you've got 50 things you need help with. We'll just go dancing. It's a party. But the next day isn't much of a party for Daryl and Camilla when they talk about the centerpieces. What do you think? I don't know. It's just not really doing it for me. Whatever, man. Let me see you do better. I think you should let me handle the centerpieces. You're going to take everything away from me? I don't want... No, you've had your time, and now it is mine. I'm already putting effort into this, Daryl. I'm not happy with it. We're not using it. This is a centerpiece, and this is what's going on. I feel like Daryl just doesn't acknowledge that I have a, some kind of talent that seems like he doesn't care. So as usual, Daryl's unfazed. But a call from his good buddy DJ soon changes that. Hello? Hey, Jay, how's it going? What? <sighs> You're leaving me in a tough situation. I thought we sealed it over the beer and the handshake, bro. We're going straight from the wedding to the divorce, it might seem like. OK, Jay. Thank you. Daryl is such a laid-back room to be, he's horizontal. He just doesn't get it. We're going to get it done. I know we will. I'm, I'm confident. But bride Camilla is wound up tighter than a garter belt. I feel like it's always on, it's all on me. Fortunately, nuptial fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch has swooped in to save their wedding and grant them three wishes. Wish one, stop Camilla's mom from inviting everyone she's ever met. And today, they're on to wish two which is getting schooled and getting down. This is Chachi, your dancing teacher. All right, the happy days. Yeah. Yay. yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, I think the thing to do is just to start by showing me a little bit of what you got. Oh, my foot. I'm sorry. It's you who need the lesson, not me. I'm hurting his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> While Daryl and Camilla cut some tile, Brenda's at home cutting to the chase. I'm looking for a yes or a no whether you're going to come to the wedding. All right, so it's a no. Okay. And back at the dance studio, Daryl and Camilla are creating beautiful, uh, something together. Forward. Forward. Watch your toes. <laughs> and Michael and Jane are dancing to the beat of their own very strange drum. OK, try it again. Go step forward. Forward. Watch your toes. Try it again. <laughs> together. Take okay. smaller steps. You got that? So go forward. <laughs> Lose it after that. Try it again. <laughs> okay, okay. Hello. Hey. So Jane has granted the couple their wish. Oh, yeah. you can't be serious. But it looks like Twinkle Toes has hung up his dance shoes. Today, with only four days to the wedding, Jane has become a gumshoe because she can't help but be a little doubtful about Daryl. When Daryl says he's going to do something, I'm making sure he's going to do it. So when Daryl emerges from the tuxedo shop without a tuxedo in hand... Where's your tux? Jane wants to strangle him with a cummerbund. It's had a different story, they say. We could have done without this. Daryl, go. On a mission. Every time she opens her mouth, she scares the hell out of me. I can either be his best friend or his worst enemy. My ring's in yet? I told you he's not going to be ready for today. It's for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, oh. we talked about it uh, like two days ago. And finally, Mr. Cool is starting to sweat. <laughs> you know, that's the way it goes, but I'm not, everything will still get done. A little. It's like... Is anybody bothered? The next day, Detective Jane becomes Dr. Jane as she does her rounds. Rings, 
Did Daryl get the rings? He hasn't picked them up yet. I feel like putting a bum under Daryl. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, we need to uh, get working on place cards. One thing I picked up on was, on your replies, it's got one person's name bringing three guests. Are you going to put Mr Smith's guest? Because you haven't got their names, have you? No, I don't. I guess we'll be doing a lot more phone calls. So. Looking at how much they've got to do now, and how much time they've got to do it in, can they do it? I don't know. The next day at the wedding site, oh Daryl has found a new enemy, Mother Nature. Everything is just coming crashing down. Everything is just snapping, and I just want to... And there's also something weighing heavily on Camilla's mind, a big, fat rain cloud. This is not good. No, it's this not. This is not good. For once, Daryl and Camilla are on the same page, so he calls Jane. They're forecasting rain, forecasting huge thunderstorm. I don't know, I was just wondering if there's something, anything you might be able to do. Please don't ask me to make it stop raining, because I can't do that one. Well, <laughs> some kind of canopy or some something that will help us. And when he says canopy, he's not talking about mini quiche. So you want me to get a canopy for 200 people and put it up here? Jane, you're going to have to pull out my third wish. That's a wish, my goodness me. The way everything has been going. With your luck, we'll have a thunderstorm. <sighs> How are we gonna do this? Do you know? <sighs> so the next day, Jane goes to her happy place and confers with her right-hand man about what lays ahead. I'm going to London now for right. a couple of days. She'll be back in time. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, flight's booked. Um, the tent's booked, so there's nothing for you to worry about. Or is there? When Daryl and Camilla's wedding plans went off the rails... Nothing's on time, nothing's done. Superstar wedding planner Jane Deus Hinch granted them three wishes to get it back on track. Curb Camilla's mom from inflating the guest list, get the couple to bust a move, and then get rainy day insurance for the wedding ceremony. But will it be enough? Today is the wedding day, and problem number one, the groom has gone AWOL. Yeah. We are missing the groom, which tends to be a little bit of a problem. Daryl, answer the phone. And Camilla has her own problems. Colin. Yes. Have you gone yet? Huh? Have you gone yet? No. Gone where? To um, the east. Well, I haven't gone yet, because. Uh, okay. Hey, we're supposed to pick up the menu card since yesterday. The lady's been calling the house like every hour. So, are we going to be leaving soon, or? Yeah. You just, uh, good just pick them up, and we'll take it from there. And you need to. They go like five minutes ago. But all this angst may be for naught if Michael can't find the groom. He decided to basically just take off and go somewhere. And that where is I don't know. But we do know where Jane is, delayed in London. I'm grounded. I'm absolutely stuck. Are you serious? I tell you, if I could get a shuttle from NASA, I would. This isn't good. No, it's not good. In all my years as a wedding planner, I have never missed one wedding. Michael, this is a Jane wedding, and I'm counting on you. OK. I know you can do it. This is the one. And if you don't, I'll string you up. Michael's left hanging, but Camilla is on solid ground thanks to her mom. I'm going to be the rock for them today. I'm coming to her and giving her this day from my heart. I want to do this. Camilla? Yes, Mom. Come on down, babes. Wow. You're gorgeous. It's a special day of your life. And I want to present this gift to you. It's a handkerchief with a little bit of blue in it. Mm -hmm. And I want you to hold it as you go down the aisle. So, take this. And you look gorgeous. You're my baby. Don't <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Meanwhile, over at the ceremony site, Michael is about to shed tears of his own. Did Camilla's mom invite these guys too? Well, what should I do? Like, they're just, they're on motorcycles, Jane. Motorcycles? I'll, I'll talk to the guy in charge. Well, go and sort it out. OK, I'm on it. We have a wedding here at 2 o'clock, so is, are we going to be in your way at all? Uh, we're out of here in 15, 20 minutes. Oh, perfect. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my god, nothing's done. Jane, it's, it's a mess. There's mud everywhere. Goodness me, what next? Is this the theme for the day? Is this about how many? Um, 280. 
280? Okay, I could have sworn Jane said it was 200 people. Jesus! It might only be 199 because they still can't find the groom. Oh, what a do for a gin and tonic now. Where's the groom? Have you seen the groom? But he emerges, and it appears he's got a little salt on that tongue. Here, film this from behind. Here, come behind. Just don't film this from the front, because you guys are going to get run over. You're slowing me down. Here, come, 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 come. Just While Daryl spontaneously combusts, Camilla and family roll in smoothly. I just picked up my wedding bells. I had to knock on somebody's door. I left them at home. So the groom is accounted for. But how about the weather? Thank God we have the tent, because it still may rain. And it's definitely getting stormy for Daryl. Where the is the wedding planner? I need this camera to stay out. You gotta come behind me, please. I don't like it in my face. Okay, That's the thing. Okay, let's talk to me. Michael manages to pacify Daryl. The sun comes out, and the real show starts. We are gathered together here to witness the union of Daryl and Camilla and holy marriage. Wedding invitations to people. I do. You make this the bride. I'm happy, I'm proud, I'm elated. It was everything I hoped for. Well, we clearly didn't have to use the tent today because the sun did shine. Now we're off to the reception. Do you have the program? No. Do you know where the money basket is? The money? No, I don't. We're missing some of the name tags. Well, hopefully, the bride and groom know where they're sitting because they've arrived. <laughs> and the party is just getting started. We love Jane, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, and I really do mean it. Jane is totally amazing. Jane, we love you, Jane. Come on! You got a kiss! Yeah, we go! Thank you. It was very difficult without Jane but I hope I made her proud. And Daryl would have made her proud because at least he didn't step on his bride's feet for the first dance. We enjoyed the dance lessons. Chachi was good. We liked Chachi. Chachi was cool. And so was the weather. But just in case it wasn't, they had wish number three, the tent. I'm very much appreciative of it, but I'm very glad that we never had to use it. My wedding day was, was, was perfect. It was great. I want to thank you guys, SOS, for coming into our lives and making a difference. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Well, pumpkin. What do you think? You came through. Really? Unscathed. That little pretty face. Thanks, boss. I learned from the best. Of course. <sighs> Ruby and Tasha's wedding is skyrocketing out of control. Oh, boy. So wedding planner extraordinaire Jane Deus Hinch has come to bring it back to Earth. <laughs> It'll be a laughing stock. She should be crying. But the couple can't agree on anything. Bagpipes? It's a Sikh wedding? I think it's horrible. And family traditions? No. Are being put uh, out to pasture. Not in a million years. Will Jane be able to guide this wedding back onto the trail? You but can't say it's about a thousand. Or will she ride off into the sunset? Big. Huge. Massive. Ooh. Is it or is it not a giant martini glass? You just don't glass? want to compromise. That's what it is. You don't. For Tej and Ruby, it all started with a yeah, maybe at first sight. I don't know. I thought I had all the time in the world to find, you know, the perfect person, but I just ended up being you in the end. Hey. <laughs> no, you ended up being the perfect person, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes indifference makes the heart grow fonder. Ruby, she's so energetic, so talkative, and very opinionated. Sometimes it's a hard you have a hard time trying to fit in a word or two. Like, I'll start a story. You want to interject so badly. Right now. <laughs> it takes me about 10 minutes to finish a two-minute story. But when it came to getting engaged, time marched on fast. Real fast. Ball started rolling uh, beyond our control. And uh, next thing you know, about a week later, we were sitting down having dinner with her parents, and uh, Ruby and I were engaged. The proposal may have been a sprint, but the wedding itself is a marathon. We're having a traditional Sikh wedding. It consists of four days. I think an East Indian wedding differs from a standard wedding uh, by sheer volume. We've got guests flying in from India, England, Vancouver, just all over the place. And this numbers, America. Numbers and... definitely in the thousands. Numbers, you say? How about this shocking number? The wedding is 10 days away. 
uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I have so many things to do still. I have so many things to do that are making me nervous. And since Tej spells his name with a capital O, C, and D, when things aren't running smoothly, he freaks. Freak is an understatement. I'm a meticulous planner and very organized. It's a little crazy. But the crazy thing is, when it comes to this wedding, they're not organized at all. There's a whole bunch of things that haven't been finished. Like the fight to the death as to how they will enter the reception. We can work but he's not going to play the Roddy Roddy Piper too. No, no, that's not what I want. Like that. Yeah. I chose for the uh, entrance um, a pair of traditional Scottish bagpipe players. Uh, that, I, I was really excited about my choice. Turns out others in the wedding party, not so much. But surely, Scottish bagpipes at a Sikh wedding is standard, right? I don't understand where it came from. I just thought it would go away because he wouldn't get it done and uh, we wouldn't end up with that. Okay, maybe not. I am really upset about it because I don't, that's not really the way I saw the wedding going. And the series of crushing disappointments marches on for Ruby. Centerpieces are a huge issue. We can't agree on centerpieces at all. We talked about having a, a fighting fish in a bowl before and um, nobody was up for that. And Tej isn't too up on saddling him. It is traditional for a groom uh, to show up on a white horse in a Sikh wedding. He just refuses to get on one, and I don't understand why. I really don't understand it. I'm afraid of animals, you know, that you'll tell me it's the cutest puppy in the world, and I'll see Cujo staring back at me. When it comes to the wedding, everything becomes a joke, and he thinks he can just laugh it off. Though he may be laughing on the outside. It's leaning towards being desperate at times. There's days when I'm just like pulling my hair out and I just want to crawl up into a fetal position and stop thinking about the wedding. Jane, please help me for my sanity. Ask and ye shall receive, lovelies, because here comes wedding planner slash fairy godmother, Jane Deus Hinch to the rescue. And Jane doesn't travel lightly. Her assistant, Michael, will be there to help Jane grant the couple three wedding wishes to save their three ring circus. <laughs> I got your wedding SOS. What seems to be the problem? We are 10 days from the wedding, and we still have tons of planning left to do. And how many guests? Um, somewhere from 1,000 to 1,200. Right, we're looking at 1,200 guests. We're looking at, yeah. And when will you have your final number? Well, they have the rough numbers, like about 1,000, so. You can't say it's about 1,000. <laughs> They're getting married in 10 days' time. They've got 1,200 people coming to their wedding. And Ruby's laughing. <laughs> she should be crying. When you walk into the room, looking at the table, centers, have we got? No. 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 Centerpieces, they're the signature to your wedding. They are so important. Our entrance is a little bit of a mess right now. We're very confused. We can't agree on how to enter for the reception. I wanted to go with the traditional kind of entrance with uh, an Indian like drum player, uh, adult and player, horse. and uh, and a horse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody involved with the wedding would love for me to come in on a horse, except the guy who has to come in on the horse himself. And then Ruby drops a pipe bomb. She I'm having a bagpipe players, which and, and not the horse. <laughs> well, bagpipes are a horse. Want to make a statement? <laughs> Whoa, this is one way of doing it. Bagpipes at a Sikh wedding. Goodness me, he'll be a laughing stock. That poor family. I don't have my bridal bouquet or my bridesmaids bouquets. You haven't got your flowers? No, I haven't. Have you got tuxedos? Have you got your wedding I still have to go for my tuxedo fitting. So before Tej curls up in the fetal position <laughs> and Ruby giggles herself senseless, <laughs> Jane comes up with a plan. We need a starting point, and I can hear flowers. OK. Table centerpieces. You want fish, you want flowers. I think we have to do a lot more talking here. This board is going to be full by the time I've finished. It's a wedding for over a 1,000 people in 10 days. So many decisions to be made, so much to be done now. But I'm your fairy godmother, and I can give you three wishes. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Use them wisely, but you need to go now. They really need to think about these carefully. This could make or break their wedding. Meeting with Jane was like a harsh reality check, and it just told us everything that we still have left to do. She kind of awoke the fear in us about, you know, how things could go wrong. Ruby and Tej, fabulous couple. What's the matter with their wedding? How long have we got? 
Tej and Ruby are getting married in six days. They have 1,200 people coming to their wedding, and they have zero confidence that they can pull this off. There's days when I'm just like pulling my hair out and I just want to crawl up into a fetal position and stop thinking about the wedding. Enter Jane Day's Hinch Wedding Planning Dynamo. She's here to grant them three wishes to help this couple get their wedding under control. But today, Tej has work to do. He's trying to wrangle up the courage to ride in on a horse for the traditional Sikh entrance to his wedding. Problem is, Scaredy Cat oh, can't get past the dog. That's, that's not happening. Freedom, come here. Tej. Jessica. Jessica, nice to Very meet you. Very nice to meet you. How are you? Deathly afraid right now. I'd rather be like bungee cord jumping over the Grand Canyon. Really? Yeah. She's very harmless. Would you like to pet her? No. 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 So what is your goal for today? Honestly, I just want to see if the idea of me and a horse is even feasible. OK, would you like to go yeah, meet sure. Shrek? <laughs> so while the rhinestone cowboy cowers behind his host, his cowgirl is down yonder checking out some flowers. Yeah, I need, like, fuchsias and, um, so something that has you want something springy. Stand springy might be nice. <laughs> With only six days to go, flowers might be nice. Meanwhile, back at the ranch... I don't think I could pet the horse. What if I brought him just a little bit closer? Never mind the horse. The Rottweiler has Tej in a tizzy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on, it's OK. <laughs> no. No? No. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Not in a million years. It's just not happening. I can't do it. All right, Jessica, thank you very much for all your help. You're very thank welcome. Thank you for understanding. Walking up to it, I was trying to convince myself that I'd get in and I'd give this a shot. And then when I got in up there close and like, the size of his head is just humongous and I couldn't get over that. The next day, back on paved land, city slicker Tej calls Jane for assistance. Hello. Hi, Jane. It's uh, Tej. I went to the stable. I tried to do the deal with the horses. I, I tried my darnest, but I'm at the end of my rope here. I don't know what else to do. Oh, it just gets worse and worse. I'm going to take a wedding wish on this one. I'm going to need your help. Well. So wish one renders Jane and her assistant Michael monosyllabic. Well. Big. Huge. Massive. Ooh. Ooh is right. But still, Jane works her magic, comes up with a plan, and meets with Tej the next day. We've got to get Tej to overcome his fear of animals in a matter of days, and this is just a huge wish. But who can pull off this kind of wish? Wonder Jane, of course. I'm here to meet with a behavior therapist, and I'm just outside waiting for Jane. Hello, Tej. Hi, Jane. I'm not going to Oscar to meet you. Oh, great. I'm <laughs> really excited about that. Tej and Oscar waste no pleasantries, and Jane gets them right to work. Tej is getting married in four days' time, and part of the tradition is that he arrives at his wedding on a horse. He's having real difficulty with this, and we need to help him. Well, I think that we can help him in a hurry by doing some exposure with him, and I can see right now that he's making himself feel comfortable and safe and not fearful and anxious with, with the dog immediately to his right. I went to the stables mm -hmm. to try to see if I could overcome my fear of the horses on my own. It was very, very difficult. It was... It wasn't just mentally impossible, it was physically impossible. Yes. I was just so tense to, 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 to reach over and make contact was hard. Do you understand why? You know, fear being a normal physiological response, Correct. you know, I, I think my fight or flight response really kicked in. How many years now have you been avoiding, do you think? As long as I can remember. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. I was never around animals. There is a certain amount of predictability to animals, isn't there? Mm -hmm. If we spend enough time around them, you begin to see how predictable they really are. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what startled you there? What, was I see the dog. your leg? The dog was in Jane's arms, mm -hmm. and then he wasn't. Right. And I wasn't expecting that. And the more that you avoid, the stronger the fear becomes, and it develops a real huge life of its own. For the wedding, how do you think you're going to handle the horse? Oh, I'm not going to. This is not of stubbornness or anything, but at this point, I, I don't see it happening. No, I, I agree with you, Tesh, because I, I think that the fear is so significant and, and so high at, at this point that I, I don't think it's in the cards that you're going to be riding a horse. So while Tesh shrinks into the chair, Jane works out a compromise fit for a fairy tale. I understand how enormous this problem seems, and to actually get up on a horse mm -hmm. is just not going to happen. Uh -huh. How would you feel riding in a carriage, but the horse is pulling the carriage, but you're in the carriage with? 
you know, it, it, it's still a step to take, but I, I, I'd feel then another human would be in, in control. When you think you can touch, uh -huh. touch his fur. That's good. That's very good. Who's in control? I still feel myself and Jane are. That's right. Yeah. You're in control, and Jane has is, is got him, and, yep. and so he's very relaxed and happy and peaceful, isn't he? Right. That's very good. That's a big deal, isn't it? It's the uh, first dog I've ever petted. Was that amazing, or was that amazing? <laughs> so while fairy godmother Jane seeks out the perfect horse and carriage for Cinder er Tej, the couple falls to centerpieces. That's just... That's just ridiculous. Right. We're not doing fish, but we're not doing candles in a martini glass for sure. Okay, so let me just try something with flowers. I'll go out and take a look and see what I can do. All right, but I want to see it before we finalize anything. One thing I don't want to see in the centerpieces is roses. I just think they're cliche. Everybody's done. I'd like to see like something more creative than that. Oh, wow. Those are nice. I really like this. Oh, boy. Tej and Ruby are hosting a massive Indian wedding in only three days, yet they still can't agree on centerpieces. Why do you always have to resort to totally ridiculous scenarios? Or their entrance for the wedding, and it doesn't help that the nervous groom is shaking all over. That's, that's not happening. So they've wedding SOS'd Uber planner Jane Deus Hinge, who will grant them three wishes to save their wedding. Today, Ruby is desperately trying to come up with a centerpiece for a hundred tables. And Tej, who has gone on record as saying how he thinks roses stink, is coming to see the handiwork. What do you think? It's roses. What's wrong with the roses? Just, it's just cliche. I was saying it was just cliched. Is, is this what you guys came up with? I really, I really didn't want roses. Can we use a wish here? Yeah, I think we should get... We've done as much as we can with this. Uh, so ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, Miss Jane Day's Hinch. If we can't find the right person, I've got a lot of flower arranging to do. But before Jane wilts, she gets Michael to make some last-minute flower arrangements. No. Oh. Oh, OK. <laughs> because Jane needs time to see what's up the pipe with only three days to the wedding. What happened about the bagpipes? I've been in contact with them through email. Tej, don't lose the focus. Don't lose what we're trying to achieve here. There is still a lot more going on. But remember, you've still got one wish left. Choose wisely. I've booked a horse and carriage. Mike is doing 100 centerpieces in three days. I can't wait to find out what wish number three is. But first, Jane has wish two to solve. And Michael has some uh, strange ideas. I thought you'd booked a florist, not a prop house. And so Jane is feeling like if you want something done right... Come on, we've got work to do. I'm you Jane. get Jane to nice do it. Jane. We've got a very, very urgent, pressing situation. 100 tables and three days. So many options are presented. Wow. I love it. I don't. But then, bingo. Yep. Good job. The tall vase, flowers, I think this might work. So Jane leaves the centerpieces in what she hopes are capable hands, but she has one nagging or rather droning worry. So she visits Tej, who's in the thick of pre-wedding celebrations. How's it going? It's going. Tej, what haven't you done yet? I, mean, I haven't called the bagpipers. But this is your grand entrance. I know, I just haven't been able to get into it yet. I still have a wish showing. And so, wish three is born to the sound of the pipes, the pipes. Last and final one, I think, I think I feel safest with this in your hands now. A day before. <laughs> I love it. Bagpipes, here we come. Tej has booked the bagpipers, but he's never seen them, never heard them. There's a lot of hot air going on around here. So off goes Jane to meet the man with the bag. Now, is that a thistle in his spawn, or is he just happy to see her? Have you played at an East Asian wedding before? Oh, yes, I've done many of them. It's news to me. They're looking for this grand entrance into 1,000 to 1,200 people. They want this... Wow factor. We are definitely wow papers. Fantastic. <laughs> the bride is worried that it could sound too marching band. 
Is there anything you could play that isn't? <clears throat> we are actually playing for a procession. Maybe if you play something like that, we can, we can film this and show it to the family. So back at Tej's house, the clan gathers, and it appears they're getting reeled in. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not everyone. I think it's horrible. I, I don't know. I, I don't see what you're seeing. I see, like, it's really amazing. It's awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. It's like... I don't know. Everybody's just going to be like, that's so strange. <laughs> I wonder why they chose that. So I don't know what will make me feel better about this. If we can get him to play something a bit more... Indian, maybe? We have to convince Ruby that this is going to be the wow factor at her wedding, not ruin her wedding. And Jane knows all about marching to the beat of her own drum. In this case, an Indian drum. If I can get you a doll player <laughs> to play coming in with the pipes, mm -hmm. would you be happy with that? I think that would be a good compromise. Better than a compromise. They like they could play some sort of tune where they complement each other. How's everybody else feeling now? Yeah. It's, it's not such a crazy idea after all. So Tej is happy but Ruby needs to hear it to believe it. The only thing I can do right now is pray and hope that what Jane does works out and that it does work out. When Ruby and Tej's wedding plans steamrolled out of control, they sent out an urgent SOS to wedding fairy godmother, Jane Deus Hinch. And now it's up to Jane and her three wishes to peel this wedding off the ground. Today is wedding day. The players are assembled and Jane and Michael get right on top of the music for this shindig. So you're the DJ? Yeah. Have you had any instructions? Uh, I've got no instructions so far. You haven't got any instructions? No, not I shall help the DJ with that, because to make it all run smoothly, everybody needs to know what they're doing and what the cues are. So while Jane and Michael get the itinerary in order, Ruby and Tej get hitched. Back at the reception hall, Jane checks on the outcome of Wish 2, the centerpieces. It's great how he's done it. It's beautiful. So he's put some little pink flowers in there. He's got the height. And then back to Wish 1, the horse and carriage. This is very English. I love it. But Jane is still very concerned as to whether Tej will love it. The reason I've come over to see you is that we need to reassure the bridegroom that okay. nothing's going to happen. His worry is that the horse is going to take off. The horse will not take off, no matter what. And that's what you need to tell him. So I need you to be a good boy. Be a good boy for Tej, OK? No scary movements. Now it's the calm before the storm. We just now have to wait for the bride and bridegroom to arrive. And at the risk of being fabulous, Jane changes into appropriate dress for a Sikh wedding. Then she's off to check in on her multicultural musicians. Are you going to match their tempo? Okay. I don't know. We'll need to try it. So Jam Master Jane frantically works on getting the rhythm in him in time for the grand entrance. But first, Tej needs to meet with his big, hairy nemesis. Has he been doing this for a while? He's been doing it for quite a few years, yes. All right, buddy. I'm going to trust you on this one, all right? Come on, then. Let's have a carriage ride. I think I can do it in the... Yep, yeah, I think I can get in the carriage. So Tej and Ruby mount their sweet, romantic ride. But tension mounts inside while Jane prepares everyone for the couple's grand entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and bridegroom will not come in until everyone's inside. As Mr. and Mrs. Pajinder and Ruby Sohoda, please give it up. Chose their wishes wisely. It's all come together into their fairy tale wedding. Jane did an amazing job. We're so happy and uh, we love Jane. All three wishes came out beautifully. I think that those are what added some pizzazz to the wedding. When Tej arrived in the stretch limo, he saw the horse and you saw him think, 
Oh my goodness, I've now got to do this. It was fun to actually come in on the horse and carriage. The whole feeling of like the open air. The Scottish pipers. When the doors opened, the bagpipers walked in first. Yeah, I guess that's the part we were worried about the most, just the entrance, all of that yeah. stuff the put together. Like, the horse and carriage All day we've been in. talking about that. Yeah, but it worked fabulously. You saw everybody go, wow. What can I say? It's colorful, it's dancing, it's everything you want in an Indian wedding. Makes me feel horrible. I don't have a dress. Wah, 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 wah. Amanda, a bride two sizes too big for a gown. I don't know, I just am ready to give up on it. Lee, a groom who's totally MIA. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. If I ask him another question, like, what's your name? He's gonna say, I don't know. I have no clue what's going on. Will even Jane Day's Hinch have enough rope to lasso all these problems? This wedding has one arm tied behind its back, and its name is Lee. Write down names of the people that have already put their names on them, which isn't really that hard. Really? When they first met, Amanda and Lee didn't send the proverbial sparks flying. She thought I was uh, arrogant and rude. Yeah, he was arrogant and rude. I thought she was bitchy. Yeah. But turn off the electricity and let the magic begin. There was a big city by blackout, and uh, we had met up at, uh, at a bar. And... <laughs> <laughs> One thing led to another. Oh, Mother Nature and her wondrous gifts. Before she got pregnant, I asked her to marry me. But this beautiful skin-tight dress, designer dress, and then two months later, I found out that I was pregnant again. But what Mama Nature has given, oh, she doesn't awesome. always taketh away. Wow. But wait. This bride has become too big for her britches. Um, suck it in, Amanda. Suck. Are you sucking in? Yes. I don't have a dress. As of right now, I don't know what to do. My wedding's in a couple weeks. I don't have anything to wear, and I love that dress. So with only 12 days to go, Amanda's wedding dress dream is in tatters. But at least she has Lee to comfort her. I'm not really worried about it because I don't have to wear the dress. I don't think he's upset at all. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. A ceremony site, reply cards, bridesmaids' dresses. She needs the help so that she's not so stressed and she's not bothering me so much. Oh, if we don't get help, I think... I think the wedding's gonna fall apart. Well, fear not, my lovely bride-to-be. Your fairy godmother, Jane Deus Hinch, and her marvelous assistant, Michael, are here to fix your fears. This is a wedding venue. Why do you think all the guests are gonna park? She's wedding. brought three wishes to put the wonderful right back into this wedding. I got your wedding SOS. What seems to be the problem? I don't know. Our I have no clue what's going on, so that's a problem. The bridegroom doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Where are we now? What's this is where we're having our ceremony. I found it quite difficult to find here. How are you guests going to find? Have they got maps? Nope. Uh, no, they don't. Hopefully they know how to use the internet. <laughs> how does a reasonable person think that their guests are going to find the directions to the wedding? Do they think they're psychic? And what's the biggest problem you've got at the moment? The biggest problem we got at the moment is her dress not fitting. Just uh... It's One the, dress is probably the most star important. Of the show. These are problems from 12 months ago, and they should have been sorted then. Are we working to a budget with the wedding? We are. Have we blown the budget then? I don't know. So how come Lee doesn't know what the budget is for the wedding? Because Lee would flip his lid if <laughs> Lee knew about the budget. This wedding has one arm tied behind its back, and its name is Lee. We have to get him on board. But Lee is on board with some things, i.e. his manly locks. Have you got a hair appointment booked? I do have my hair appointment booked. Right. And back to the bride. No. No hair appointment. If we don't get this organized, I'm going to have a bride getting out of a car going, the dress didn't fit, look at my hair, two children on a hip are going, take me as I am. Yeah, we're kind of ready to give up on it. Giving up on it is not an option. How do we sort this one out? We've got to go and make a plan, a big plan. And what a plan it is. It's enough to make a grown man weep, or in Lee's case, pretend it doesn't exist. I don't really know what's going on with the wedding, and I don't really want to know. Sorry, Lee, reality sucks. This is where I think we need to start. From when your guests arrive, the parking seemed to be a problem. 
You need to do a seating plan. We still haven't decided whether you're going to have a runner running down the middle to create an aisle. What, what's a runner? If you're going to have any flowers or any bows or any decoration, at the moment it's a garden with 60 chairs in it. I'll take care of that with the decor. Yeah? Yep. No, I'd prefer if he didn't. Do you even know what the backdrop looks like? It's that big purple thing. It's not. Oh, OK, cool. I don't have to deal with it. Thanks. It's not rocket science. I mean, it'll be pretty easy. Wedding dress. We have dress, but we can't get into it. Huge problem. Am I keeping you up? No, no, it's good. And you say you've done your speech? I'm just going to wing mine. You are not winging it. This is the most important speech of Lee's life. How can he wing that? Can you see how big a problem this is? It was overwhelming, the amount of information that we didn't have, like, planned. Fairy godmother, and I give you three wishes. Use them wisely. If you waste them, this wedding could be a catastrophe. I'm going to keep one of those wishes so that if I need to use it, I can. We'll talk about that later. I've had such a hard time exercising. I, it's so hard to leave. There's nobody to watch the kids. I don't have it in my budget to buy another dress, so it has to fit. Like, something has to be done. With only 10 days left till the wedding, it's time to call in the special forces. Hi, Jane. It's Amanda. Here comes the fairy godmother with the mostest. How big a problem are we talking? It's about, I think, two sizes too small. Ooh. How much do you love this dress? I love that dress. You love the dress? I love it. This is desperate. This is a wish. It has to be a wish. I, I have to have a wedding dress. We need to take you to bridal boot camp, but that is going to be punishing. Yes. This is going to be so cruel. So Jane enlists her assistant, Michael, to help Amanda's quest for the dress. We're going to have to put her on a diet, no carbs, and a really good exercise routine. I can do it. Let me do it. I was a bar mitzvah dancer once. I can totally take charge of the situation, Jane, and I can help her work out. Bring on the tough love of the fit and the fabulous. OK, you're in charge then. OK. But I'll be watching. OK, Michael's up to bat. Can Are you, you squat? ready? Can you squat? Yeah. All right, here we go. One, two, three, and down. Work that tushy. All ready? We're going to go up and down. Nice and tight. While Amanda gives major league effort, Lee's speech writing skills aren't fit for the minors. Enter Coach Jane. If he hasn't done his speech, I'm going to motivate him. How'd you start then? Thank you all for coming tonight. I'd like to also thank my wife for looking so damn good tonight. You're going to say to Amanda, my beautiful, you look so damn good? No, but I'm, I wasn't done the sentence. Oh, OK, carry on. So I'll start again. I'd like to also thank my wife for looking so damn good tonight. No, really, she looks amazing all the time. Yeah, next. Jane's, Jane's pretty tough on me. I'm trying to be polite here. Good work to actually put pen to paper, but it just sounds as though it was the first thing that came into your head. It does come across as. Yeah? Yeah. I am supposed to make the best speech, so it helped me to figure out what I want to say and how to say it in a, uh, I guess, a more grammar way. Grammar good. Jane, better. Can I get you to help me with that? With one of my wishes? You want me to help you do it? Yeah. I'm happy that I chose the speech making class as a second wish. And I know Amanda will be happy with it, too. I agree with Amanda. Lee does need some help with his speech. But to use it as a wish, haven't they got bigger fish to fry? So the wish is that you want me to help you and the bridal party write the speeches. Yes, but mostly me. Seven days till the wedding. Oh, uh, no. And Amanda's got to keep working. we got to fit into that dress. No time for whining. Come on, Amanda, let's go. No My whining. legs hurt. No whining. Come on, let's no. go. Shush, come on. Mike's a drill sergeant. I hate bridal boot camp. Next day, Amanda's boot camp goes mobile. Go. 
Okay, ladies, we're gonna get started. Uh, switch. You wanna come with me now? You wanna come with me now? Okay, huh? <laughs> so if you wanna bring out your babies, you can. If you're and Amanda goes flat out while Michael gets a workout of his own. Okay. Good, good job, Amanda. <laughs> come down, up, all the way back down. Good, so you're just lifting up slightly. Tank top. Good. All the way back down. Good. <sighs> Okay, come on. While Michael chases Tessia, Jane has a play date of her own. I've been a Toastmaster for over 10 years. This is the most important speech of Lee's life. Are you ready for this? My wife and I. No, would like... my wife and I. Of course, it goes without saying how beautiful my bride looks tonight. Amanda. You see the gap? Yeah, 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 yeah. You made me the happiest man ever. Kiss. No, you kiss her. And, uh, and I over the past 18 months. Well, it's however long he's been planning the wedding or however long. It says 18 there. I know it says 18 in there. That's for example. Oh. My wife and I would like to thank you all for sharing this special day with us. Oh, you sound bored before you start. Of course, it goes without saying how of absolutely course. beautiful. Can we get some emotion in here, Lee? Get the sentiment and put it okay. into your words. From the pause. And how happy I am that you're standing here beside me. No, she's not standing. You're standing. Big thanks to my mom and dad for the way you've brought me up over the last 25 years. I must say, what a fantastic job you have done. Where's the big laugh I'm supposed to get, eh? Well, they're supposed to have done a fantastic job. I've given them the basics of where to start and how to write a speech, but it's now up to them. You really need to rewrite it and rehearse it, because if you don't, this could be one of the most embarrassing moments of your life. I'm not nervous anymore about making a great speech at the reset speech other. I'm not great. I'm not nervous about making a uh, great speech at the wedding anymore. The next day, Amanda gets a devastating letter. Penny, her best friend forever, can't afford to fly to the wedding. I'm really down. I'm really depressed. She's my oldest friend. She's the only one that's known me since I was a little tiny girl. So I really wanted her to be here. Amanda is absolutely devastated about this. I really wish I knew what to do here. I, uh, I just can't take one more thing going wrong. Well, it looks like Amanda made the right choice with Lee because he proves he's marriage material. I want to know if I can get a secret wish. OK. Amanda's friend from really far away is not going to be able to make it in. I have the money to get her here. I just don't have the time to find her. I'm on it. I'll track her down. I'll fly her in, and we'll give Amanda the surprise of her life. But the next day, when Michael and Jane check up on Amanda and Lee's list, they get a surprise of their own. What if we still got a couple of crosses? What's that? I haven't decided if I want a runner yet. Next one, marriage license. We've got a tick with that. Tell me you got the marriage license. No. No marriage license. What? You haven't got no, it? No, I forgot all about it. What time is it? We can't go now. Well, I have to. I have to go now. 50, it's like a five minute drive. Get all the right. paperwork. Okay. Get the paperwork. Um, okay, here. Let's go. Mike, you take the kids, okay? Oh my God. How are we supposed to get in? I think it's closed. No, it isn't full of I don't see anybody in there. Oh, I see someone. I see someone. Hello? Excuse me. Oh, good. Here it comes. Hello. Sorry, we're closing. No, it's not quite 4.30 yet. We need a marriage license. Marriage license? Yeah, like, right, right now. Yeah, I can do a marriage license. <gasps> oh, Thank you. Skin off teeth. If he hadn't have opened the door, we'd have had no marriage license. We'd have had no wedding. With only two days till the wedding, Jane has to deal with another weighty problem. Wow. Target weight, look at that. Fingers crossed, she fits into the wedding dress. Well, look at you. Do you want to turn around? Go that way. Can you? Ooh. I need you to put your hands. You would honestly, I can do. I can try and do that. It won't. You'll burst the zip. I mean, you've lost all the weight. It, it, it isn't the weight, it's your rib cage. Having a baby, it's, it's made it expand. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. No, I just, I'm ready to give up on it. I'll have to think of something. 
I'm really, really upset for Amanda. A bride not to have a wedding dress, and she really loves that dress. To not get into it two days before your wedding, it's just disastrous. But back at HQ, Michael is sweating over one thing that could make it better. But are you Penny's neighbor? Hello, is this Penny's grandmother? You know Penny? Oh my gosh. Yahtzee, Michael's found the lost Penny, and Jane picks her up. And then they're off to make the wish come true. Hi. Hi. This is all very secretive, isn't it? Welcome, Penny. I'm <laughs> so glad you're here. It means a lot to me to be here today. She's my all-time best friend, and I would never forgive myself if I wasn't there tomorrow. So while Penny gets a VIP treatment at a hotel, Jane uses her VIP connections to treat her bride. I've been keeping this shop up my sleeve for a special occasion, and this is it. This one didn't work. Do you want white? Do you want ivory? I prefer white, but I will take ivory if it fits. What about this one? No, it's white. That's got detail. I can barely breathe. But if you were a foot taller and Dolly Parton, it would look great. Oh, for goodness okay. sake. What are we going to do? Because we are, like, not finding anything. This one doesn't fit either. Have we got anything else? Do you like the look of this one? That one's nice, yeah. Yeah, OK. Want to give it a shot? It's got detail. It's got a small train. It fits. It's the right length. I like it. You're starting to look like a bride. <laughs> we have a dress. I've uh, finally found a dress. It looks fantastic. She loves it, and it's the right price. But there's just no way that how everything is working out, something else will not go wrong before tomorrow. So Amanda scored a sweet dress, but still feels bitter. Maybe a cherry on top will help. I've just got one more dress to show you. Can you take another dress? It's not gold, is it? No. I know we're all I really like that one, though. I know, I know, but I'm sure you're really going to like this one. So close your eyes. Oh, God. This is the dress of your dreams. Open your eyes. See what you think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Surprise! So is it a pretty dress? <laughs> yeah, I like dress. this one. I'll take this one. You'll take this one. Yeah. This is your wish number three. This is what Lee made come true. Uh, Isn't he so good to you? Yeah. That's your third wish. Well done, Penny. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> better than the dress. Oh, much better. <laughs> this is my very oldest and best friend. We've been friends since. I don't know. Kindergarten? <laughs> yeah, for like 18 years. And Lee has used our third wish to bring her here because she couldn't make it to the wedding. So I got a surprise. <laughs> Very good surprise. <laughs> Magic wand. Fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch has put a dress on Amanda, put words in Lee's mouth, and put a smile on the bride's face with a lucky penny. <laughs> Are we ready for the big day? I can't find it. We look for our speech. Apparently not. It seems that Lee has lost his speech. We didn't find it. No. We have no idea where it is right now. So unless Lee has it all in his head, his Jane-inspired speech may be wishful thinking. But in the meantime, Amanda's head is destined for greatness. Amanda's been so busy taking care of everybody else's business that I've arranged this as a special treat for her. While Amanda gets pampered, Jane's back to work at the wedding site. Isn't this the most perfect setting? It's beautiful. With the sights set to perfection, Jane checks in with her less than perfect groom to be. Penny! Come on, two minutes! We get her here from Labrador and she's late with no dress. So where's the bride? Yeah, I thought she's doing the same thing. No? <laughs> Tell me 205. You good. Okay. I just have um, to get out and put this in. You my dress? Yeah. <laughs> Do we get her dress? So Penny's dress may be MIA, but Amanda's dress is looking smashing. We'll do that and point that so it okay. comes towards me. Right. Okay. And just like that, this fairy godmother turns fantasy into reality. Amanda and Lee, 
Are you willing to publicly declare your love? My love will always be unconditional for you. I will stand by your side when things get tough and still tell you you're handsome even when you go completely gray. And you may seal your union with a kiss. Thank you for all your help. It was awesome. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Do you like the dress? I love the dress. Actually, it's nice. I'm going to love it tonight when it's... No. <laughs> Thank you. When they told me they didn't have my dress, tears just came to my eyes. I was like, how can you guys forget my dress? Like, I can't go to a wedding in jeans and a t-shirt. But I'm here. I'll go back and get the dress for the reception. Jane! That is, if they can get to the reception. The limo broke down. There's no limo. There's no limo for the couple or for anybody. There's no limousine. The owner of the house, he has a nice car. Okay. Go and ask David if he minds transporting the bride and bridegroom to the venue. Okay, I'm on it. A crisis, I think. So now we have to arrange rides for everyone. Yeah. So, how many people are we talking then? You've got a ride. I don't have a ride. I don't have a ride. One, Jeff can take two. Five. You've got a ride? Oh, I'm fine. You're fine. I've come back to try and sort this out. Awesome. I think we're going to take you up on your offer of the viewing. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, is that all right? Yeah. The owner of the property is getting his car out and he's going to transport the bride and bridegroom. Let's get the bride into her car. OK. Look at that. We have a bride. We have in a bride. The car. Magic wand. So Lee takes Amanda happily away on his trusty steed. But ahead lies his greatest battle yet, his speech. Um, yep. Memorized. Memorized. So Jane bites her tongue, but then decides to help give Lee a fighting chance. Who are you toasting? It was at the end of the speech that we wrote. Toasting my bride. While it looks like Jane's got him off the ropes, let's just hope he can deliver the knockout punch. I gotta first thank my wife, my new wife, Amanda, for just looking so beautiful tonight. Gotta thank her mom too. Next, I need we to prepared thank you. and we rehearsed, and actually, he didn't do too bad a job. I love you. It was magical. Like it's like mine and her heart were pounding together. It was. Just, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> we got Penny here, and that was the most amazing wish. I was a little bit more nervous about getting married until Lee did that, and then I realized that if he's willing to do something like that for me. I've definitely picked the right guy. Good thing I did that. <laughs> we have had a beautiful wedding. And Jane, you truly saved the day today. I Absolutely. did. You did. I did. You did a great job. <laughs> I would just like to say thank you, and we really appreciate her being here and everything that she's done for us. Definitely she thank you. You can come to our house anytime for, for gin and tonic. Wonder wedding planner Jane Deus Hinch works magic with nervous grooms and panicked brides. But now, she's dealing with a bride who needs to quit smoking. I don't want to have to kiss an ashtray. And a groom who needs to convert to Judaism. These are things that have to be done, okay? They have to be done in a couple days. When a cancellation turns the whole thing from bad to worse. This is now thrown the whole wedding. Will it all make Jane Meshugana? The rabbi's going to... He's going to pinprick him in his penis. <gasps> What, the wedding? Community theatre folks Bob and Rachel may have started off as a comedy team but Bob was not your typical straight man. My friends at work are like, oh yeah, he's so gay. He's just <laughs> so gay. But then his overwhelming masculinity won Rachel over. I thought he was kind of a geek. Yep. Uh, okay, but maybe it was pure animal attraction? Looks aren't everything, of course. Sorry, sweetheart. Yeah. So first comes a love, and then comes marriage, in only eight days' time. It's all the little stuff. I have no clue what to do with it. And that panics me. 
and that rash of panic is contagious. You told me almost everything's done. You give me a list of things to do. You never told me about this. I don't think you really understand how much stuff there is to do, okay? Of course I do. No, you don't. I'm getting really anxious and I don't know where to go from there. Well, lucky for them, the queen of marital GPS is here to steer them in the right direction. Wedding fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinge and her assistant Michael will grant the couple three wishes to help them navigate through the murky wedding waters. But first, Jane needs to step into her time machine. Is this where they're getting married? It looks like a bad flashback to the 70s. You tell me then what the problems are. Okay, well, the problem is we want to have it a little bit more decorated. It doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like a wedding, though. No, not at no. all. No, I have no And our no budget is really tight, so, you know, to decorate it fully would be... This place needs total refurbishment, and they want it decorated, no budget. Good luck with that one. Where is the ceremony going to be? You have an MC? Where are you going to go for your photographs? And then Jane's wedding spidey sense starts to tingle. You're going to drop something, I can tell you, that's going to make me go... I still have to convert. convert. Judaism. She's Jewish, I'm Christian. So I'm reading a book about this thick, and then I... I'm just still taking in, I'm, you know, you just threw that one in there. <laughs> and I'm just yeah. trying to convert. My grandma's a bit more religious. You know, she's from the old school, she's 80. And it's a big thing for her to have her kids follow the religion. Bob has known for quite some time that he's going to convert to this new faith. Why would he leave the conversion to the last minute? Uh, maybe because a conversion involves one prickly prerequisite. The rabbi's going to pinprick me uh, in a certain area. He's going to pinprick him in his penis. <gasps> what, the wedding? I'm thinking, he's going to drop his trousers in the middle of the wedding? I'm thinking, no. No. <laughs> I hope not. Up, thank you. Well, all around family entertainment. Yeah. Um, I'm worried because, you know, nothing sharp goes down there. So Bob is scared stiff, and the stress of it all turns a rather tame conversation feral. I know the problem it, is he gets really stressed. And I'm stressful me because stressed. I come home and I think I know what needs to be done, and then you pop me with something else. But you to done, you haven't done yet. But all I, I have other things to flowers. do. You okay, tell me you decide there's a whole thing. I only asked them what needed to be done. Goodness me. I think we're in trouble here. If Rachel and Bob are stressed now, they'll be totally reclamped when they see Jane's plan of attack, listing everything the couple must do to walk down the aisle, like booking a limo and photographer and making centerpieces. And then she assigns tasks to each to clean up their mess. This is where a marriage starts. It's with the planning of a wedding. Come on in. Hi. This is the plan. This oh. isn't our list, though, right? This is your list of things to do. OK. Anything that's underlined in red is what you need to do now. Are you going to have a rehearsal? Are you going to have programs? Have you got a meeting with the rabbi? Have you got a microphone? How much work is this? There's so much work in such little time. I don't know how we're going to do it. Like, I thought I had so much stuff in this wedding done, and now looking at the list, I'm just like, oh, my god. Decorations. That is the big question mark. We thought, because we're going with the movie theme. The what? We're, the, we're going with the movie theme. And because... Where did that come from? What, um, what movie theme? No, we don't want it cheesy, but we want it in the, the like hall Academy itself. Like Academy Awards. Yeah, that kind of idea. Yeah. Right. I've done a lot of theme weddings over the years, but a wedding with a movie theme? No. This is one day. You only get one chance. But there is something that's going to make it a bit easier. I can give you three wishes. Thank you. Use these wishes wisely, because at the moment, it's huge, guys. It really is. I thought everything was under control. I thought we, we planned everything OK. Now, if I thought there was only this much to do, there is this much to do. Are we really ready for this? With only six days to the wedding, the couple definitely has their share of problems. But Rachel has 25 of her own in a pack in her purse. The big compromise is, is that, you know, he will convert 
if I quit smoking. And how's that going there, Princess Yellowfingers? To be honest with you, I kind of like it too much. And since Rachel's wedding stress level is high, the mound in the ashtray is getting higher. For a non-smoker, it's very hard to know what smoking helps a person with. It's my way of stress relief. When we first moved in together, compromise was that I would smoke outside, I wouldn't smoke inside, and he would deal with the smoke. But when Bob comes home, he has no choice but to deal with the smoke and the smoker. This is the most romantic day, and I don't want to have to kiss an ashtray. You know, what are you still smoking, especially in the house? You're up to 40 cigarettes a day. I even saw you light one with another one. You don't do that. Would it help if we got Jane to help you out? What a time to give up smoking when your stress levels are up here with wedding plans. If it's pressure that's making Rachel smoke, Jane knows getting her to butt out means pressing Rachel's buttons. This is Rachel, this is my bride. Hi, nice and if you. anybody ever needed acupuncture for smoking, it's yeah. this lady. Come right along, come with me. Rachel is so stressed. She's getting herself all worked up about so many things that now it's too big. It seems too big. Hey. The relaxed bride. Yeah, how to go. Oh. With the stress gone, so is Rachel's urge to smoke. But Bob's stress has only just begun. Because he's completing the written part of his Jewish conversion. And it doesn't look so good. And Bob's answer sheet isn't the only thing looking blank, as Jane discovers when she comes to check on their progress. There's not a lot done on there. Well, we're trying. Yeah, we're... what's happening is, is that we're finding we're starting tasks, and uh, then we're not completing them. That's right. That's so right. they're half done. Half done, yeah. Well, we can't have half done, because if we have half done, they won't be done on the day. So we need to really, really focus on this now, because we're running out of time. I'm trying to go by my mother's words in baby steps, but when there is so many baby steps to get to the top, it seems like it's, it's never going to end. So we are going to try definitely harder to get it working. If not, well, at least I'll have my dress. So I need to see more checks on here to say, yes, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, Great. rather than we've started it, but we need to do it. Okay. The chances of Rachel and Bob's wedding going ahead at the moment, I wouldn't be placing bets. Since their wedding plans are going down in flames, Rachel decides to say hello to her old friend named Mr. Smokey, only one day after her acupuncture. Hello. Hi. Are you smoking? Yes, just one last one. Smoke one last up. one. I'm very disappointed in Rachel that she couldn't give up smoking, but she's such a chimney, I'm not surprised. Now, to add to my horror, they're going to take me to a movie memorabilia store to discuss their wedding decorations. I think I feel a wish coming on. Are you serious? Can you put the movie theme? Sure. What, do you want, like, a Terminator wedding or a Raging Bull wedding? More like uh, an affair to remember. <laughs> well, it won't be an affair to remember with this. The one thing that they really need help with is the decorations for the wedding. The wish is never mentioned, so I'm guessing they've got even bigger problems. And big problems just got bigger because Bob got his conversion exam results and his score made his head spin like a dreidel. Hello? Jane, I'm in trouble. Uh, I tried to write the conversion exam and I blew it. I need to cash in a wish, Jane. Please help me pass this exam. Oh, boy. Oh, and they. There's only four days before Bob and Rachel's wedding, but Jane has been dealt two wishes that need solving now. And though she wields some pretty serious wedding magic, Jane can't be in two places at once. What we need to do is divide and conquer. You take Bob, and I'll take Rachel. Hello. Thank you. Today Thank I'm you. taking Rachel for a session of very intensive hypnotherapy. It works on the subconscious mind, and for those that commit to it, it can be life-changing. Go to that beautiful place. Meanwhile, Jane's assistant, Michael, is trying to get Bob to open his eyes because he needs to become fully conscious if he's going to pass his conversion test. 
What is a bris? What is a Jewish Torah? Oh, no, come on, that's an easy one. There's a fork in the road, and the fork to the left is the fork of smoking, and the fork to the right is the fork of non-smoking, of being clean and clear. So as you look down the left-hand fork of the road, just notice how dark and dingy it is. What is the Torah? The Torah is basically the book of the Bible. What is a matzah ball? A matzah ball is matzah ball soup. Yes! Bob, you're Jewish! You're <laughs> Jewish! You are finally a Jew! No, yes! Let's go home! Michael's mini cram session has Bob full of chutzpah. But will it be enough for him to pass Jane's master class? Gently coming away, coming alert. Alert. There. Welcome back. Well done. Smoke free for life. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm so happy that I went for hypnosis. I feel so relaxed. I don't need a cigarette. Rachel's been given all the tools now to quit smoking, and it's up to her now. <laughs> so Rachel is all sunshine and lollipops and wants to share her little piece of heaven with her mom. And there's no better way to start feeling like a bride than to dress like one. You need a sheet and a chair. The chair to stand on. I won't get it ready. OK. Mom, stand still, Mom. I would have just got down. Come on, Mom. Mom, okay, stand up, stand up, stand up. There. You see? Perfect. Back from the old days. You see like all it. the sparkles? Yeah, no. Okay, now. Okay. There. Isn't that beautiful? You look gorgeous. Oh, perfect. Beautiful, I like this very much. Gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should be okay. Ah, oh, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Beautiful. You look like Audrey Pepper. See? Perfect. Now you're not going to want to take it off. No, I'm not going to want to take it off. It's only three days before the wedding, and Bob's retest and conversion ceremony is tomorrow. He's all set, but one thing is sticking in his, uh, schmeckle. You know what I'm really worried about? It's that damn pinprick. No, you're you not a guy. Have to... You have to be a guy to understand. You don't... Okay. No sharp object was near there. You know what? Practice. Uh, no. 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 I don't know. Come on. But later that day, when Rachel calls the rabbi to firm up their details, it's her turn to scream. I just want to confirm that everything's okay for tomorrow. Um, I've got the payment for you. The what? I got a call from Rachel. She was distraught. The end result is the rabbi has bailed. So Jane calms Rachel's kvetching and tries to make sense of it all. So this is now the rabbi to do the ceremony or the conversion or both? Both. 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 OK. She thought she was paying one amount, and actually that was the deposit. She thought that was the full amount. Now he's asking for the full amount, way out of their budget. This has now thrown the whole wedding. Please, find us a rabbi, make him marry us. Oh, Rachel. Is anybody available at such short notice? And they may do the ceremony, but they may not do the conversion. So Bob dodges a bullet because the pricking will have to be postponed, but they still want to have a Jewish wedding ceremony. Nope. Bob, this... Bob will... He'll go along with it. He will? Yeah. Lucky for Rachel, Jane's massive Rolodex includes just the right wedding mensch who she's worked with before. I'm very fortunate to know Eva Goldfinger personally. She's one of the very few rabbis that can perform interfaith marriages in North America. And today, Jane's calling in a favor. She's in such high demand. I have got such a lot of sweet talking to do today. Oh, wish me luck. Mazel tov, boss. When I saw her calendar, 
I was shocked. This woman is even busier than me. But I stood my ground. She'll do it. Nice work. Bob and Rachel's wedding needed the magic touch. So fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch granted them three wishes. Wish one, snuff out Smokey the Bride. But Bob's wish to get help with his conversion was totally wasted because the rabbi canceled and no rabbi equals no conversion. Which brings us to wish three, find a new rabbi who will bend the rules and make this wedding kosher. She'll do it. Nice work. But will she make it in time? This busy rabbi has two other weddings on the same day. Right now, it's Bob and Rachel's wedding day. And though nothing says romance like a military cannon, Jane wants to see how the couple's movie theme decor came together inside the venue. And she's not surprised that though it's all set up for a wedding, it's a far cry from a night at the Oscars. I told them right from the beginning that this idea of a movie theme was not a good idea. I've now got an hour to go and transform this hall into something elegant. Jane is still determined to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear before guests start arriving, since all she can do now about wish three, the rabbi, is wait. In the meantime, Michael is making a groom out of Bob. It's your big day, yes, buddy. Yes, it is. How you doing? I'm so excited for you. Oh, you a little nervous? Oh, yeah. You're yeah. feeling fresh today? Oh, yeah. All right, now I'm going to be at your side all day long to take care of you, so whatever you need, I will take care of. And over at Wuthering Heights, the bride is looking exquisite. But beneath her serene exterior, she's jonesing for a dart. Sitting in that chair, four and a half hours, getting my hair and makeup done, all I could think about was having a cigarette. But hopefully, Rachel will be distracted from her craving when she sees her smoking hot sailor. Rachel loves uniforms. It's very like um, Tom Cruise Top Gun. Yeah, exactly what it's like. So Bob shines up nice, and Jane and her crew have been working hard to shine up the hall. I've got 15 minutes, and we're still doing last minute things. Everybody's working flat out, and the bride is on the way. So, uh, yes. This one. Those two. Sorry. Unbelievable. That's one in the face, sir. Top table in between the bride and the bridegroom, please. Thank you. It's like a child has to have sweets. Okay. And with Jane's crew, not a single detail is overlooked. And the hall is in top form, just in time for the bride's arrival. Wow. You look amazing. Breathtaking, in fact. Honestly, you look beautiful. I'm so proud of Rachel that she's not smoked at all today. A wedding day is so stressful, but I'm just about to give her some news. I hope she doesn't have a relapse. Bob's just given me a bit of a scare. Uh-oh. When did you last speak to the rabbi? She's got somewhere to go after. Afterwards, that's yeah. right. So she told so us that she was in the early. OK, OK. With only minutes before they're due to walk down the aisle, the rabbi still hasn't materialized. This is to the wire. But Rabbi Goldfinger makes it with seconds to spare, and Jane is ready to hoop it up. Hi, Jane. Thank you for helping so much. You have saved the day. Honestly, you have. Can I give you a hug? Of course. I'm really glad that I could make the time to be here. I'm sorry that you had to go through the uh, trauma of uh, yeah. losing your rabbi. <laughs> Rachel, Robert, would you hold the cup together and raise it in a toast to savor the richness of your lives? Just a sip, Robert. <laughs> In many cultures, both ancient and modern, it is customary to break glass at joyous occasions. You did it again. Fantastic. Fantastic. The first kiss was everything I dreamed of because she didn't taste like an ashtray. It was so important to have a Jewish wedding, and it made my grandmother really, really happy. It was beautiful. 
It really was. Jane was a godsend. If she wasn't here, I really think that it would have been a disaster. Can I get everybody standing on their feet as I introduce for the first time ever, Robert and Rachel Rachel, you have been the inspiration in my life. Uh, you have taught me that, you know, that I'm, that I'm worth something, you know, to somebody. That is the best gift anybody could ever give me. Um, I love you so much, and I will try to prove it every single day of my life. I think Rachel and Bob had the wedding of their dreams. They wanted a night at the Oscars. I think they had an award-winning performance. Good, huh? Weddings go from frightening... You got something? I need to stop talking. Stop talking. Hello. ...to fabulous with the magic touch of fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch. So chill. This wedding needs a referee. You're the only girl who wants to see the wedding before the wedding. Because. A whistle. Excuse me, Anthony, look, I'm but, about but it. I don't, I'm just saying, I don't. And a white flag. What is that? I see color. Will Jane be able to douse the flames, or will she end up with heartburn? I'm lining no, them up. No, you're not lining up anything. I'm lining them up. She's almost sabotaging her own son's wedding now. going to be 200 people in the backyard. What they want to put that responsibility on me? That's not you, babe. This couple can be hot-headed, but that makes sense. Anthony and Yasumi met in the heat. I met Anthony in Cuba. I knew that she was a dancer in the show, and she went on stage, and then I got to see a lot more, and then I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so she wore pretty feathers in her hair and a dress cut down to there, and that kind of heat spun them right into marriage. Oh, wait, that's listen, listen, listen. That's about this is about a compromise, right? That's Are we not getting it. married, though? We have our fights. He don't listen, he just explode. So it's a given. Anthony's no shrinking violent. Focus on me. No, yes to me, yes to me. I need to stop talking. You can say that I'm a bit of a control freak. Excuse but he's me. loosened the reins enough to let his mother loosen her purse strings. It's my choice, my choice, my choice. Wedding right now is pretty much my mom. I'm doing it truly from the bottom of my heart for my children, right? It's supposed to be Anthony and my wedding. No matter whose wedding it is, it's in 12 days and it's in shambles. I will not, I will not see this go down the drain for a stupid wedding. Everybody's so stressed and like nobody can even think. I want to let you know, I'm the fairy godmother. Uh, sorry, Mom. The real fairy godmother has now arrived in the form of superstar wedding planner Jane Deus Hinch. Jane, with the help of her assistant Michael, will grant Anthony and Yasumi three wishes to turn this demolition derby into a Grand Prix wedding. I'm Jane. And she goes from zero to 60 in seconds. What seems to be the problem? We have a wedding in a few weeks, and we don't really have anything planned. My mom, aunts, and sister are pretty much in control of the wedding at this point. And Why is that? They've You've let them be. Yeah. And that's in control of an Indian wedding on one day and a Cuban reception the next. But Anthony is worried that the ball has been dropped. I've seen what's happened, and I think it's time I take control of the wedding. But Jane knows that Anthony's first step requires a call to the sheriff. I think we need some answers. The only person that knows is your mum. Let the fireworks begin. Uh, listen, hello, hello, hi, hello. OK, I'm sitting here with Jane. Jane has some questions, and I'm going to need you to answer them for me. She's going to come up with a plan that we can follow. Mom, mom, can you understand me? And it soon becomes very clear that there's a serious communication breakdown in this family. Because I need to know what's going on with the wedding. I mean, it's not going to look like anything, because let's be honest, nothing's done. Here's how you're going to help. Here's how you're going to help me. You're going to step back and do what you're told. And we're going to take control of this now. Oh, what are you doing? She hung up. Yeah. Oh, and today. I really just got a real reality check talking to my mom. This is starting to look like the worst crisis I've walked into. Now, every hour counts. She threw me into the fire and said, hey, guess what, it's hot. 
Before this wedding spontaneously combusts, Jane tables a massive plan of attack, and the couple absorbs the horror. I don't know how we can do it. I split it into two days, the Friday and the Saturday. With the Hindu ceremony at your mum's house at 6 o'clock. The catering, has your mum got 200 plates? The menu, the food, the plates, the cutlery, is she having stuff? It's a whole event, and she's the hostess. She's going to do it herself? I don't think so. That is just Friday from 7. Let's start on Saturday. You've got to have a table plan. Your DJ, you need to discuss what time he's setting up. Okay. The dancers, the Cuban music. Beaches. Yeah, we have who? Wing. And how long? <laughs> you want to put the speeches are done? We know who, what? No. Yes. No, I, I don't think so. Do you really think that they have a program? Out of everything. Do you know what we're stressing out on? Other people's speeches. Yeah, I'll take care of That's my job, right? This is huge. You're in trouble. You are in the deepest of trouble. I feel really scared. I can grant you three wishes. Choose carefully, choose wisely, because that can make or break all of this. It's gonna be a miracle if we can do it. Exhausting. But for Anthony and Yasumi, there's no time for napping. So they head to the site of the Indian wedding, AKA the home of his mother. They've now got only 11 days to dig themselves out of the steep hole. Oh, and uh, speaking of hole. What the hell? Why'd they do this right now? I left for one week and I come back and there is a hole where there's supposed to be a wedding? Mom, can you explain to me? I am not coming out there. There's a hole in the backyard. Did you notice? There's going to be 200 people in the backyard. We got Lake Ontario going in. She's no reason why I just can't talk to her right now. So Anthony and Yasumi seek out some peace of mind, but it's not long before Anthony's mom appears and causes him to lose his. My blood pressure is just through the roof right now. You need to focus on me, focus on me, focus on me. We just need focus to on me. No, Yasumi, Yasumi, I need to stop talking. Stop talking. Let's work together, not against each other. Anthony, excuse me, Anthony. Look, I'm but, about but I don't, I'm just saying, I don't even know. You cannot do this without the stress. Try to relax and try to speak with the people. Try to relax? Whatever. <laughs> no, listen to me. I to, I'm going to relax. I'm going to relax. Okay. You relax too. Superstar wedding planner Jane Deus Hinch has come face to face with a wedding that was SOL. And now they need a massive SOS with only nine days until the wedding. Today, Mr. Big Stuff feels confident that after their meeting with Jane, he can fly solo and introduce his aunties and his mom to the master plan. No, 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 I'm taking control of this wedding. And then to something else called logic. There's just no way we're going to be able to fit 200 people in that backyard. Hold on a second. It's my choice, OK? Sorry. Okay. It's my choice. But mom, no, I'm just going to it's, it's, it's going to fit. Mom. Peter, we had 150 people at your wedding. And you didn't have, you didn't yeah, have a shed. shed. You didn't have to. And the hole. Don't forget the hole. Stay here, stay here, Mom. I have something to look after. I don't want this, I don't want yeah. that, I don't want that. Vera, can yeah. I see you, please? No. I'm serious. Can I see you? What oh. I'm here is that you guys are making me look no, so, but so we're not stupid, right? No, we're not. Listen, what did I tell you? Delegate the work out. All right, here we go. All right, I got, uh, I spoke to... So reluctantly, Anthony's mom rejoins the discussion. But the hen party isn't quite ready to stop pecking. We now have to figure out who we invited to the... Um, to the Hindu wedding and now redirect everybody okay, there. We'll call everybody. That's not the But we don't really remember who we invited. I, know everybody I need everyone invited. to start oh, speaking family. one at a time because I can't listen to four people. This family oh. doesn't know how to work together as a no, team. I'm, I'm talking right now. I have okay, the talking stick. Ahead, Look, I've got the talking stick. Let's go pretend ahead, this is the talking stick. With your five at in the end of the day? Yeah. We just we had don't one have day nothing less. down. Mom, I need you to stay I'm here. This wedding is, is my wedding, Mom. Another day's gone by and we haven't got a thing done. I think I might need to cash in a wish. I'm having a lot of trouble planning this with my family. Anthony called me in desperation. And for Anthony, that is serious. It's a huge wish. What he wants me to do is bring his whole family together. So even though Jane has peacekeeping skills plus, she knows that she needs a professional team builder to help keep the lid on this boiling pot. So only the top life coach in the country will do. And since a boxing ring wasn't available, a gym works to contain the energy. So I've asked my friend Alex Gelman here tonight to come and meet with you and go through some exercises that will help in this 
family building. I need to get these people talking to each other like adults. All right, ready for the first exercise. The first thing we need to do is build trust. Why don't we start with Anthony? You're going to fall back, and we're going to have your beautiful bride catch you. Oh. <laughs> That's beautiful. How about with your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Is, was she there for you? Yes, yeah, she was there. Yes, I know she was. And do you trust him? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I think it says a lot about Shanti that she didn't trust Anthony to catch her. And it explains why this wedding is in such turmoil. Anthony, you're gonna let me hurt myself. I'm not doing no. it. No, I'm serious. I'm not doing it. I don't trust you, folks. This is not... So you don't trust me? I was really hurt that my mom doesn't trust me. So you need to learn about other people, who they are as a personality, and cater to their language. We also, a lot of times, actually don't listen to what people say. OK, but um, we do communicate. She thinks visually. Visually. And with that comes her feeling center. Okay. All right? When you're communicating to Anthony, what would you now focus on? And try to be more calm down. Don't give him too many details. That's not his thing. He's more interested in the bigger picture. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Let's talk about your communication style. Your communication style tends to be on your own timeline. And when you do it, you like to do it fast. You are a leader. What, how would you communicate with her? Maybe, um, maybe paying more attention to what she wants to say and listening a little bit more. Hopefully, through this exercise, we'll be able to plan this wedding together. A lot of work still to be done. Can they pull this together? I don't know. I really don't know. Bring on the next argument. Jane must have a sixth sense because with only eight days to the wedding, Yasumi brings home her dress and Mr. Control wants to see it. Let me see the dress. Let me see the dress. No. You're just supposed to see my dress. That is my look and I believe in that. I'm either going to see the dress by myself or you're going to show it to me. I'm going to wear that dress and you don't going to see it, OK? So wait until the day of the wedding. I'm going to see that dress. Anthony. I don't care. I'm going to listen. I want. <laughs> you're the only groom who wants to see the dress before the wedding. Open the door. What is this? Like, seriously. I don't gonna wear that dress. And where I gonna find a dress now, Anthony? I'm never gonna forget this. Anthony and Yasumi's wedding is a mess and only seven days away. But fairy godmother Jane Day's Hinch has granted them one of three wishes. Stop the fighting and start the planning. We can change it. No, I don't wanna change it. Oh my but God. since then, Anthony saw Yasumi's dress and fireworks flew. So as Yasumi discovers she's dressless, Oh dear. Jane discovers the hole in the plans. You have got to be kidding me. This is a demolition site. It's absolutely farcical to even think that you could have 200 people in your backyard enjoying your wedding with all this around you. Ridiculous. Did you take a look at the backyard? I've just walked through the backyard. Uh, I'm looking for another hall as we speak. Let's go and take a look at the board. We've now got to update this board, because things are changing. Yes. Mm. The Hindu ceremony is now not at your mother's house. You've now got to find a venue. This has now become number one priority, new venue. Working our way down the board, we hit the dress. And what's the issue with the dress? It's big. Uh, I saw the dress, Jane, <laughs> and I don't like it. And I'll be quite honest with you, there is no wedding if that dress is going down the aisle. A bridegroom does not check out the bride's dress. It's an unwritten, forbidden law. It shouldn't matter to you if she wanted to wear pink taffeta with silver bows. It looks like buggers are splattered on her dress. Please. Yes, Amy, give it to me. So if you're not wearing this dress, what are you going to do now? Jane, I'd like to make this one of our wishes. What? To change the dress. What a waste of a wish. Now? We have to find a suitable dress that will please Anthony. Second wish is for a dress. But for now, the dress is set aside and Jane does a two-step around another bone of contention. Have we done anything on the Cuban party? I can't find anyone who doing the Cuban dancing, the authentic Cuban dancing. Well, if this is becoming a bigger problem, do you want, do you want the Cuban dancers to be a wish? I don't know yet. We're running out of time, and we need to go dress shopping. And Anthony, which 
Whatever dress we choose, you're not going to see it until the day. Uh... And you'll like it. I want Yasumi to feel a million dollars in this dress and have the confidence to walk down that aisle to Antony and not have him at the end going... ruin everything. I know that we're going to be able to find the dress of the dreams for Yasumi, but I need to make sure that I'm there to help her choose it because Shanti's coming too. It's not beautiful enough for me. What? So that's out of the question. That I do know. You like the train? Yes, it's nice. I don't like it, and I know for sure Anthony won't like it. Keep looking, because this is not the first choice. Okay. So... But I don't know, that's out. I know my son won't like that one. What about this one? It's strapless. It's got a nice long train. Let's try this one. Oh, very nice. I love it. <laughs> Would my son be happy? I think so. <laughs> I think so too. You know what? I actually like this dress better than the other one. <laughs> you like this one better than the other one? This one is better. Okay, yeah. thanks to Jane. Yeah. Thanks to Jane. What? Did she say thanks to Jane? So a white dress becomes a white flag, and then Anthony extends his own kind of olive branch to Yasumi. Since the dress debacle derailed everything, it's now become too late to book their Cuban dancers, and he wants to fix it. Hey, Jane, it's Anthony. I was hoping you can grant me one wish for Yasumi. I want to have the Cuban dancers in my wedding to show my, my, my culture. Since it takes two to merengue, Jane brings her assistant Michael along for the ride. That's a fun wish. Auditioning for male dancers? Oh, I think it's your dream. It is. It's only four days before the wedding, but before Yasumi can say mojito, Jane miraculously pulls off finding a spicy buffet of dancers to audition for the couple. May we have the first dancers, please? <laughs> requested this wish on Yasumi's behalf, he's still taking the lead. I was looking for something with a Cuban romantic flavor to it. I feel like my home. Like We're definitely Cuba. gonna get back to you later today. detail the show more or less the way I want it. Would that be fine? Yeah, we can accommodate whatever your needs are. Thank you very much. I see my culture here. This is the real Q1 hot. I just think you're all very sexy. I'm so impressed, really. This is exactly what I want to of my wedding. Have I granted the wish for the dancers? I think this wish has been granted. Yes. So the hot gyrating rhythms may have put a smile on Yasumi's face, but the next day, the heat in Anthony's house becomes unbearable, with only two days before the wedding. I need to talk to Andrew for a minute, please. Yeah. Because no one can agree on the itinerary for the wedding day itself. I've been fighting with everybody. Everybody's got a different, you know, agenda. Everybody's got a different idea of how the program should be. Anthony's message says that unless I get over there now, he's not going to the wedding, and Yasumi is going back to Cuba. So that's the level of urgency we're at. When we went to do all the team building, I feel now as though that's all broken down again. Every time I take like five steps forward, I'm taking like 10 steps back. He feels that this should be his wedding. It is his wedding. Hello. We got one shot at this. Everybody has to feel and enjoy it. Genuinely enjoy it. Yeah, you were right about what you're saying. There is nothing more than just this one final moment. So Jane wins this draw, but she still needs to get Anthony back in the saddle. We're two days away, and I've got to make it happen. Who runs the day? You do. Right. So if I'm in charge, right, and I've got the itinerary, and I know what's got to be done, and I sit everybody around the table tonight, do you trust me to run that? So Jane gets the family together, again. Is this mine? Yes. How many people do you think are making a speech? Even if they speak for five minutes each, which is nothing. 
That is 50 minutes of talking that people have got to sit and listen to. I can't say to someone, you're off. You've now had eight minutes. If they're still talking, if, if Shanti's up there talking and she's now had 12 minutes, am I going... Whatever you need to do, guys, I have to go. But Anthony's mother is spooked by an uninvited guest. She just gets up and leaves. When I ask... This lady is going to take care of her, her ghost problems. We have a spirit in the house. What? Oh, yes. But since Scooby-Doo isn't around, the unfavorable phantom is smoked out. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Anthony and Yasumi's wedding was one step from total implosion. He's not going to the wedding. And Yasumi is going back to Cuba. When Jane Deus Hinch received their SOS, she granted them three wishes to keep the peace. Wish one had the fighting family working together in a team building exercise, which worked for a little while. And then Anthony and Yasumi had a blowout about the wedding dress. So bring on wish two. And for wish three, Jane found the couple some hot and spicy dancers for the Cuban reception. But first, it's the night of the Hindu wedding, and remarkably, it goes off without a hitch, in a hall without a hole. The next day, it's the Cuban portion of this event, and the heat is already rising. Where's the table plan? Oh, we already have it sorted out, so never mind the table. I don't want anybody interfering with my guest list. Anthony has trusted me with this, and she is coming in and overriding me and overriding Anthony and saying, no, it's my way. You are not telling me or telling the MC who I'm calling up to speak at this at, at the tables, okay? I'm, line, I'm lining no, them up. No, you're not lining up anything. I'm lining them up. Shanti has completely thrown me. I am giving the MC instructions. You're not to give the MC any instruction. I'm the wedding planner. This is what I do. This is my job. When you meet with the MC and you give him your list, mm -hmm. as long as it matches mine, mm -hmm. we're okay, all good. Fine. Yeah. Right. Done. Okay. This was set in stone and we're changing it again within five minutes of them arriving. She's almost sabotaging her own son's wedding now. I've never seen anything like that ever. That was intense. Oh, my goodness! But Jane is able to put the ugly behind her and focus on the beautiful when she goes to check on Yasumi and the dress. Stunning. Because you and Anthony are going to walk down the aisle together, he needs to see your dress. Are you ready for this? I don't know whether I'm ready for this. Oh, my goodness me, look at you! Three, two, one. Like I could have picked a better one myself. Really? Perfect. Wish granted. Wish is more than granted. Oh. So the glass slipper fits, and Yasumi and Anthony are finally ready for the ball. I will respect you. I will respect you. And honor you. Honor. May you love each other from your heart. The wedding was one of my life's experiences. I will never forget Anthony and Yasumi's wedding, ever. When the Cuban dancers came out and that was their last wish, weren't they fabulous? Oh, I'm so happy, Jane, for the Cuban dancer. It was great. I think I had a beautiful performance. It's been a very big success. Yes. And the party is such a success that all the drama is forgot and Jane and the queen and the other queen share a fairy tale like moment. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for making me happy. I granted every wish. My wish? Can I go home now? And they live happily ever after. Anthony? Okay, wrap it up, please. Well, kinda. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale of a fateful wedding. Oh my god. The bride is scared of the world. How am I gonna like walk down that aisle? And the groom is about to hurl. <laughs> Can skipper Jane Deus Hinch lead them to shore with three wedding wishes? It's not very professional to be sick all over your clients. Or will it be Jane Overboard? I decided at the last minute that I wanted real flowers. What's the big deal? The big deal is, it seems Melanie and Jeff can't agree on much of anything. We've been dating two and a half years. Three years. We've been uh, dating two and a half years. We've been, yeah. Almost two and three quarter years. I would say almost three. Excuse me. Yeah. Almost three. 
two and a half years. To three. <laughs> How adorable. Yeah, whatever. The thing is, they're getting married in 12 days, and now Melanie means business. Okay. Cake color. This is a definite yes. So this is good as well, the one I chose. I know, but this is the one we're going to probably go with. Well, does it really matter what Jeff wants, really? This is for me. I'm supposed to be the bride. I'm supposed to be the princess. This is supposed to be, well, me. OK, princess, I don't care if my fiance barfs on boats. I try to keep her happy by having the reception on this boat. This is what I want. So Melanie wants a wedding fairy tale on a titanic scale. Though I don't recall Kate and Leo having matching ink, man. And like the Titanic, they've had more than their share of icebergs. We are pretty freaked out. Picking colors. Considering the limo, considering the food that we have to choose. All the decorations, all the chairs. The gazebo. And that's just the stuff that we can think of. We've been butting heads. This is done and leave it alone. Yeah, when it gets right and perfect, it'll be done. I'm worried about uh, your stress levels, your blood pressure. So I am just, like, going to lose it. Like, seriously lose it. Happy with first? We both have had our stressful moments. Maybe like the time Jeff's mother tried on Melanie's wedding dress and it freaked him out so much you had to go and buy a new one? And I'm like, um, Jeff, your mom tried on my dress. And he's like, what? Ew, ew. I really don't want to picture my mother walking down the aisle to become my bride. It just, it doesn't seem right on so many levels. Ah. But despite the dress debacle, Jeff adores his family. I've come from a large family on my mother's side, and everybody is very close. Melanie, on the other hand, hasn't said boo to her mom in four years. My relationship with my mother is almost non-existent. This is one thing I've asked for Melanie, is just to see my family and her family come together. I am really worried that I'm going to crack under the stress just with the wedding escalating and all the family anxiety situations. Like, wow. Well, Melanie and Jeff are about to be wowed even more because the queen of wedding fabulous, Jane Deus Hinge, has heard their SOS, and she and her assistant, Michael, will grant them three wishes to save their sinking ship. And speaking of ship... Oh, joy of joys. I'm just not very nautical. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> what seems to be the problem? Um, biggest thing is we're having the reception on the water. I don't like water. Good choice of venue, then. <laughs> yeah. The boat is booked, and the boat is non-refundable now. Are we getting married on the boat? No, actually, we're getting married in a park in a gazebo. What's next? Desserts in a helicopter? And then Melanie drops the F word. There's a lot of family drama. I have not seen my mom in about four years. We're going to need a referee. <laughs> if you haven't seen her, why did you invite her if it's giving you all this stress? My grandparents raised me, and my grandmother said, well, you should invite your mother. It's proper. I do not need this extra pressure and anxiety, not on this day. How are you thinking of decorating the boat? And who's decorating it? We don't know. All my friends and all Melanie's friends and family are all in the wedding. No one's there to help set up. But while the couple continues to bring up their problems, everything's gone green for Jane. I'm starting to feel really sick. <laughs> it's not very professional to be sick all over your clients for the first time you meet them. It doesn't go down very well, does it? Let's see. What else this wonderful venue has to offer? Jane manages to find her sea legs and tours the rest of the boat. But Jeff's looking a little wobbly. Sorry. Don't throw up, don't throw up, don't throw up. <laughs> you throw up all fell up. <laughs> We're going to be doing our first dance, and all of a sudden, he's just going to all over my dress. Have I already mentioned? To clean up this mess, Jane will present the plan. It's the list that keeps on giving tasks and responsibilities. Have a seat. <gasps> oh, crap. <laughs> it was a big board, and there was a lot of writing on it. Uh, yeah. Shall we start at the top? The gazebo, the chairs, the setting up of the chairs, the collection of the chairs. Go for a food tasting. Order a meal. See the quality of the food. There's so many loose ends we have to tie up, or this thing is going to fall apart the family issues. You need to find a way to resolve this 
so it doesn't ruin your wedding day. Because if you don't, it will. We only have this amount of time to do this a bigger problem. But I'm a fairy godmother, and I can grant you three wishes. Use them wisely. Those will make or break this wedding. It just seems so overwhelming. Like, there was so much to do, and we have so little time. And it's like, how are we going to do it? We still don't know. That evening, Melanie is trying to find a way to resolve one major issue, her mother. And the conversation isn't going that well. Hey, Heather, it's Mel. Oh, sorry. Hey, Mom. Um, I'm very, very insecure, very scared. I really need to talk to you about the wedding. Even though my mother has not been in my life, it, she's my mother. But Jeff's mom and grandmother have no problem shipping off to help their boy test the food for the reception. If you get the least bit seasick, don't worry. Your grandmother will look after you. Your 86-year-old grandmother will look after you. Oh, yeah. That looks nice. Oh, it looks lovely. Okay. Now, which fork do I use? You use the small one inside. Complete lattice is weak. While the queasy captain chows down, Melanie and her mates set out on a mission. Today, I am taking my friends and my maid of honor to see my wedding dress. Everybody's going to be looking at me soon, and I, I have to get used to it somehow. And her friends better get used to waiting. How's it going in there, Mel? Uh, not so great, really, but thanks for asking. I am very worried about all those eyes staring at me. I am worried that the buttons are going to pop off my wedding dress. I am worried about tripping. And back on the SS Barfarama, Jeff is looking a little trippy himself. How do you feel? Looks you just have to go outside, get some fresh air, maybe to, uh, get a breeze or something. Okay, that is, yeah, okay. That's, a, that's a good idea. Just see yeah, some solid ground. And... Do we have to help you there? No, I, I'll be all right. You're okay? Yeah. Hey, Jeff, how about a steamy bowl of clam chowder? And back on dry land, Melanie still can't bear the thought of leaving her confines. I really did not feel comfortable coming out of that room. I just didn't have the courage. So the cowardly lion calls the wizard. Uh, I'm sitting here in my wedding dress, and I, I can't do it. I, I can't go out. The thought of seeing any disappointment or skepticism or just disdain, I just... <sighs> OK. Jane, I really think I need you to help me on this. I, I can't do this alone. I think I'm going to have to use a wish. I'm confident I can break this fear of hers, but it's going to take me a couple of days to get things together. But I'll do it. I'll do it. Meanwhile, Jeff's ladies are enjoying their lunch, and he's losing his. <coughs> so why did we pick the boat again? <laughs> uh, thanks, Mom. But it's no laughing matter for Jeff. Gina, I'm in trouble here. W what happened? I'm sick to my stomach. I just, I, I couldn't handle it. I'd like to use a wish, Gene. I want you to help me get over my fear of deep water and the seasickness. I have to. Wow, two wishes in the space of minutes. It's as though the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So the next day, with T minus nine days until the wedding, Jane and Michael have Jeff's wish on deck first, get used to the motion of the ocean, and lose his fear of deep water. It's unnerving right now, not knowing what I'm going to do, but I'm ready to go through whatever needs to be done. Well, I've brought him to a water park. Today, I'm going to use shock therapy on Jeff. Can you tell me what we're doing? No, it's a bit of a surprise, and I'm going to go and show you now. And this is going to kill or cure. Hopefully, we're going to cure him. Being on water really scares me. The only time I've been on a boat, I've got very ill. So Michael dons his best banana hammock, and the skipper, Raven Shore, leads her passengers to set sail that day. Mike, he's Jane. in your hands. Cast off. Yeah. Jeff, you have to let go. You have to let go. Here That's we go, it. sunshine. Jeff, it's only 300 feet deep. You're not hoping. But Jane's first mate spends every minute by Jeff's side, proving to him that water sports can be fun. 
Are you with me? I'm going to be able to make it. I'm going to be able to go on this boat, go on the reception, and give Mel her day. I have control over it. It doesn't have control over me. Yay! So while Jeff may be feeling peachy, the next day, Melanie feels like the pits because she's still super stressed about her mom. She's getting so stressed out, it's actually starting to come out in her skin. Oh, it's getting worse. I know. It's like really, really itchy, and I'm trying Don't to Don't scratch. And I'm just thinking, you know, is all this work really worth it? It's actually starting to scare me. Today, with only five days to the wedding, Jane is up in the air over the bride's wish. Melanie wants to overcome her fear of walking down the aisle. She thinks that this is too big an issue for her. You want a big issue? Well, we'll give you one. With G.I. Jane's assistance and insistence, Melanie suits up and it's up, up, and away. So you ready? This is it. No, I can't do this. Now, if you can do this, you can walk down the aisle. It's going to be just the same feelings. And the fairy godmother gets ready to spread her own wings. Well, sort of. I'm not jumping. But I'm coming up there with you. Are you telling me there's no seats? There's no seats. I actually thought she will not do this. So I was clinging to Jane's hand, and I am just so happy and grateful that Jane was there just to give me that strength, just to have her presence, her calmness. It, it all happened so fast. The door opened. Screamed. It was just too quick. But while Jane weeps worried tears, Melanie soars like some happy, two-headed bird-like creature. given her so much confidence. And looking at her now, she'll want to be the center of attention. Holy cow, man, it was the most incredible thing. If I can do that, I can, I can do just about anything. <laughs> oh my god, just bring it on. Three days before the wedding, Jane wants to see if Melanie is still flying high. And more importantly, if this couple has brought the wedding down to earth. Marriage license. Done. Limo arrival. Taken care of. Gazebo chairs. Done. Excellent. This is what I like to say. What isn't done? What is still left to do? I still think she needs a little more help just to get over the whole family issue, and um, especially her mother. Just the mention of her name, Melanie almost broke out in a panic attack. But the issue with her mother, it's huge. If she doesn't resolve this issue before the wedding, I don't know whether she could walk down that aisle. I need some sort of safety blanket closure, just some sort of... Buffer? Buffer. Jane, do you think um, we can use a wish here? Jeff has asked me for a wish. It means so much to him and to Melanie that mum and daughter bond before the wedding. This is a big wish. I really hope I can do it. Melanie's mum, I don't even know if she'll come to a mother-daughter bonding session, and I certainly don't know how she's going to react. She's never met me, I've never met her. Who knows, we might clash. But since Wonder Jane has never met a challenge or a mother of the bride she couldn't handle, she sets up a special rendezvous with only one day till the wedding. Hello. Hi. Heather, lovely to meet you. So glad you could make it. We're going to have a lovely, lovely day together. 
I've arranged through my contacts for them to go to the most exclusive spa in Toronto. How are you? I'm um, seeing my mother for the first time in... God, it's got to be at least three, four years. And, um... They won't stop leaking. I'm nervous. Nothing a little aromatic salt rub won't take care of. So after bunions are banished and the toes are polished, Jane gets the bonding ball rolling. Heather, are there any words of wisdom that you can offer Melanie to take with her in a marriage? Laugh together, because laughter can heal just about anything. Mm -hmm. And don't lose yourself. How are we feeling, girls? Much better. Yeah. Well, I've organized for us to have a private lunch just to continue the pampering. Should have weddings more often? No. <laughs> I'm going to give them some time so that they can actually get to know each other, bond with each other, so that tomorrow, when Melanie walks down the aisle, she has no qualms, no problems at all with her mum being at her wedding. Girls. So Jane has closed the rift, but leaves Melanie and mom alone for a more private conversation. You ready? For all this tomorrow? Oh, okay, forget the wedding part. Are you ready for the what comes afterwards? Uh, excuse me? What, like the reception? Or you mean like honeymoon? I mean, I mean life. <laughs> uh, that's better. But awkward conversation eventually leads to a much needed mother daughter connection. I feel really good now. I feel so relieved. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sweetheart. I needed that bit of quality time and just that reassurance before the wedding. I, I couldn't have done this cold turkey. Yes, you have granted my wish like big time. Jeff and Melanie's wedding was looking like chopped liver. So wedding fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch granted them three wishes to turn it into top sirloin. The first wish had the jittery bride flying high. Number two was to keep the groom from going green. And wish three had Jane mending rickety mother-daughter fences. Today is the wedding day, but when Jane arrives to check on the ceremony site, it appears that everyone else has checked out. And it looked as though the wedding is another day. There was nothing, not a chair, not a anything. Where was Jeff? Nowhere to be found. It was 45 minutes to the wedding. Did panic set in? Uh, yes. But the chairs and some helpers finally arrive, and Jane sets it in motion. I grabbed every hand on deck, and we literally put every chair out, cover, and everything in record time. And then out of thin air, Jeff appears, an hour late and a lot stressed. Guys, please, no. Just some Just a couple minutes, please. So while Jeff gets his bearings, Captain Michael is busy rowing the boat ashore. Full speed ahead. Oh, oh my god. This is a real boat. This is a real boat. This is a real and boat. And it's also the reception venue, so get to work, sailor. This needs a plate. Jane will kill me if I don't have a plate. I need a plate. Can I get a plate? How's that? Back at the ceremony site, it's finishing touches. So the stage is almost set, and Melanie's mother is front and center. But as Jane takes a long trip down the aisle to collect her bride, the question remains as to whether Melanie is ready to walk back herself. It's very exciting, but it's scary. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. When yeah. Melanie got out and all the girls were there and her father, suddenly this was real. This was Melanie's wedding day. She faced everybody, and this is the biggest smile you're ever, ever gonna have. She walked down the aisle, full of confidence. Did Melanie enjoy every second? I think so. Dear friends, we are gathered here this afternoon to witness and to share with Melanie and Jeff. It is in front of these family members and close friends that I will state my undying love and my commitment to you. It's good. <laughs> you are my best friend. You are my other half. 
You're my white knight, and I pledge my life and my love to our marriage and our happiness. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Melanie and Jeff's day is the most magical day. Congratulations. She touched my heart. They both did. And I wish them both every happiness. And then the happy times just continue because it's all aboard the love boat. To the gamble. I'm so proud of both of them. Jeff made it. He actually seemed to enjoy the boat ride after all. You're not green. I'm not green. And you ate food. I ate food. I even had a beer. Jane was able to help me get over that fear. And I honestly don't know if I would have been able to do it without her. Jumping out of the plane gave me the courage to jump out of the limo and walk down that aisle with my head up. She was fantastic. Looking back on all of their wishes, the orchestrating of getting Melanie and her mum together in this bonding, that was the most intimidating, but the most rewarding. I couldn't have done this without that wish. From gazebos to boats to planes, we've covered it all. Quite the chain wedding, I'd say. Wow. 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 Holy <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Holly dreams of being a princess bride for her Prince Sean. He's just so handsome. But family drama is putting a little too much reality into this fairy tale wedding. You won't come to my wedding? You are an <laughs> Goodness me. Jane Day is hinged the evil Knievel of all things wedding is no stranger to danger. It's like trying to bring peace in the Middle East. But this time, can Jane put out the fires before the family implodes? <laughs> That was one of life's experiences, which I don't want to do again, thank you. Excuse me. Meet Polly. Stop. Pretty high strung, huh? We've got this to do, we've got that to do. It does add more stress. It wasn't always that way. Once upon a time, Polly was a sweet, sweet girl who was looking for a super sweet guy. She's so handsome. <laughs> I saw her from across the room at, uh, at a friend of mine's party, and there's just something special about her. Ah, oh, the perfect fairy tale couple. And so much so that the bride gets all princess at every chance she gets. He would come home from work during the summer holidays, and he would find me with a tiara on my head and in a full ball gown doing the house cleaning. But Polly can't dust away this kind of stress. With only 10 days before the wedding, Cinderella isn't too worried about a shoe fitting, more like the dress. It didn't fit when I bought it. The last time I fitted it on at Christmas, it, it didn't fit still. I just can't get it up any further. It was perfect. But when I tried it on, um, the zipper didn't go up. <laughs> It was but the perfect isn't dress. isn't part of being perfect that it fits? <laughs> uh, you think, Sean? And if that isn't enough dress to stress, Polly's worried mom won't be a mother of a bride fit for a princess. The only family I have at my wedding is my mom. It's so important that my mom looks fantastic. But Polly hasn't seen the dress yet, and she's worried for good reason. My mom ordered her dress through a catalog. Uh, it said mother of the bride on the page. Uh, so she just figured it was perfect. Hope you like periwinkle, Polly. From... Yeah, we weren't going to be that couple that yeah. left everything to the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wrinkle in this fairy tale is that you are that couple. The list is, is huge. Huge list equals massive stress. And even mom's driving you crazy. Dad, bless the caretaker in this place. And then there's dad. My dad has distanced himself from us. And my sister and I don't get along. So all I have is my mom. And that hurts. It would mean a lot for Polly if her dad could make it to the wedding. I know it would, uh, you know, make her day even that more special. So the stress is contagious, and this wedding is coming full throttle. And the problems just don't stop. Now, we never thought that we'd be in this situation. Well, you're in luck, starstruck lovers, because Jane Deus Hinch is your own fairy godmother. She and her assistant Michael are here to stop this fairy tale wedding from becoming a brother's grim affair. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Jane. Hi, Jane. Nice to meet you, Sean. Hi, Sean. 
Polly. Hello, Polly. Hi. I got your wedding SOS. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, this is for your wedding day? This is for the ceremony? Well, we're going to have cocktails and entertainment out here. Oh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. The ceremony and the meal are going to be in, inside the sanctuary. I've got to see this church okay. where they're going to make it into a restaurant afterwards. Okay. This I have to say. Okay. <laughs> At least Polly and Sean have the venue figured out. As for the rest of their party plans, looks like these lovebirds were asleep at the wheel when they should have been prepping for a wedding. Now, tell me all the problems that you've got that I need to help you solve. Where do we start? Wow. <laughs> we don't have centerpieces, decoration to go in the church, no pubos, aisles, any entertainment, any flowers, rentals, caterer, the menu, nothing. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, oh, no, not the dress. Yes, the dress. Nothing booked, nothing paid. Um, my dress doesn't even fit. How many days is it to your wedding? 10, 10, 11, 11. Yeah, we haven't really counted yet. Does somebody else do maths around here? I think I'd be counting. Yes. There's all this nervous laughter and it seems as though they're fine. But behind all of this, there's tears. Now, what about parents? What about family? What's their involvement? My dad has not RSVP'd, uh, nor has my sister, and I don't have any family coming over from England. And you've brought in a British wedding planner to come and sort all this mess out. I think at the moment, Polly and Sean are in fantasy world. They're so in love, they're so happy. This is their wedding day. Of course it'll all happen. <laughs> it won't. I want to see now that we can resolve this and the only way I can do that is to go away and put a plan together and say do you realize what we've got to do this ship is sinking and everyone's going down with it I like a challenge so Jane gets the ball rolling with a wedding manifesto Holly Sean it's 10 days to your wedding there is so much to do and this is the plan of how we're going to do it this is Polly going to do it. This is Sean going to do it. It's a very full board. Kind of shocking. <laughs> so, who is going to organise the transportation for where to park? The programmes. Organising an attendant and sorting out the parking. Seating plan for the church. Your meter, greeter, seater. The flowers, the pubos, the runner, everything to do with the setting up of the church. To get the programmes, the order of service together. Are you having linen napkins? Are you having paper napkins? Have you seen the crockery, the cutlery, the glassware? How do you feel looking at that? Overwhelmed. Stressed out. Yeah. Pardon? Stressed out. Yeah. What was that? Stressed out. Yeah. Oh, you're stressed. I feel as though I've, you know, thrown the bucket of water over you going, oh. as you know. I'm a fairy godmother. I can grant you three wishes. Only three? Only three. No. Oh. <laughs> this is not funny. This is serious. Failure is not an option. We're in trouble. Yeah. But I'm glad we have Jane on our side. Yeah. And I think Jane I'm smiling will... because I'm, I'm confident that Jane will help us get out of this mess. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that a couple have got themselves into such a mess. All right. We'll get there. It's only seven days until Polly and Sean tie the knot, and fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch is here to unravel their problems with three wishes. They could have the biggest wake-up call ever. And Polly's dress has her feeling the squeeze. And to make matters even worse, she's about to see Mom's catalog dress for the first time. So this is it? This is it. Do you like it? Truly shocked that that's what she chose. It, uh, it looked like a big blue rectangle. It looks comfortable. Yeah, comfortable, like a pair of clogs. But would you wear those to a wedding? That's not what I was picturing at all. But sweet Polly can't get up the nerve to tell mom how she really feels. So she gives Jane a call. Um, listen, I just saw my mom's dress and it's... It's really bad. It's hard to tell my mom about her dress. She hasn't found anything better, so that's what she's gonna wear. She's settling with it. Well, Jane, would it be possible to go shopping with my mom right. and help her find something that's a bit more flattering on her? How will your mom feel when I go, hello, 
Your daughter doesn't like your outfit for the wedding. Would you like another one? Can we make it a wish and we'll sit down, we'll talk to my mum and we'll go shopping. So Jane has devised a plan to have Winnie looking winsome without too many hard feelings. Wynne needs a new dress and I know how to break the news to her. Every mother of the bride needs to wear a hat and oops, just need a new outfit to go with it. Mom, Jane's here. Are you almost done? Yes, I am. Just give me a minute. Well, this is it. Is it that bad? Oh, I think so. Hello. This is the periwinkle this creation. This is the periwinkle dress. And what's wrong with it? <laughs> well, it's, um... Hmm, I see. I think that Polly has got this picture of you walking her down the aisle in something completely different. I know you love this because she's told me that you love this. I do, I do. Wynne is such a nice lady, but when she walked out in that outfit, goodness me, what was she thinking? What are we thinking to the colour? I like the colour. We like the colour, it's just... It's a bit long and it's a bit too much fabric. Yeah. The shape is kind of yeah. missing. I see what I do see what she's saying. I think mm -hmm. as mother of the bride, if you were a guest, it would be perfect. But as mother of the bride, you are so special. You are setting the scene for the day. Now, she tells me you're a Brit. Yes, I am, yes. What do all Brits love to do at weddings? Wear a hat. <laughs> I've got to have a hat. Yeah, but you should I... see the hat my sister sent me. <laughs> she sent you a hat? She sent me oh, a hat. Mom, I've got it right here. <laughs> this was the hat. I told her my dress was periwinkle. And she said, oh, fine. She said, all the dress hats are out now for Ascot. But this, this, this is, this is a young girl's pretty thing. No, Mother of the Bride would be a hat. So, do we need an excuse to go buy hats? Sounds wonderful. Should we go hat shopping? Let's do it. We'll start with a hat and we'll get an outfit. Jane works wonders. She's amazing. <laughs> Jane's pulled some royal strings to make Winnie feel special. So it's a selection fit for a queen. Champagne, limo and shopping. Yes. time in a limo. <laughs> it is me under here. <laughs> Cheers. And Cheers. Dance, we did. We did. So thanks for calling. Meanwhile, not to be outdone by the ladies, Michael's on his own mission to inject some metrosexual into the suburban groomsmen. I need two tuxedos that are going to make these guys look very sexy and very hot for Sean's wedding day. Hot, hot, hot. Gentlemen, get changed, get naked, let's go. All right, boys, let me see what you got. Fabulous. Sean, you look absolutely... Let's do a little twirl. Uh, remember, Michael, wedding, not Chippendale show. Very cute, very cute. Ah, uh, back to civility. A cup of tea and a taste of home. There we are. It's as though we're at home. Oh, boy, that hits the spot. It does hit the spot. So Jane has hit the spot, but Sean has missed the mark with his transportation solution. Taxi! Well, we're going from the church to Royal York. It was like less than two minutes. Yeah, you don't take a cab on your wedding day. I don't, I don't get it. And as if the taxi versus limo tip isn't causing enough tension, Dad is still MIA on the RSVP list. Still no acceptance from him. He's not on there yet? No. It would mean so much to see my dad at my wedding. It, it, it shows that Sean and I are truly ready to move on with our lives. We're ready for that fresh beginning. But Polly needs a little help raising the white flag. So your second wish is that you want your father to come to the wedding? I don't know how I'm going to do that. Just give him a hug. Oh. Oh. Serious. It's only two days before the wedding, and Jane has her next wish. Wasting no time, she finds the father's lair. I'm going to go and knock on the door of Polly's father. The reason I'm going to do this, this isn't something I've ever done before, but it is so important to Polly that if she hasn't got her father there on her wedding day, I think it'll cast such a shadow. So, 
Jane takes a leap of faith. After being pushed out of the door, um, I felt as though he gave up. He didn't even want to speak. He would not even have a two-minute conversation with me. What will it take for you to be there? I got nothing, absolutely nothing. The only shred of hope that he has offered me is that he will accept if Polly knocks on the door. He wants her to knock on the door, not me. With the wedding only two days away, Polly and Sean have barely buttoned down details, let alone buttoned up Polly's dress. I just can't get it up any further. All this, plus serious family drama. That's not what I was picturing at all. So they've SOS celebrity wedding planner Jane Dayas Hinge, who's here to grant them three wishes to save their wedding. I can't believe that a couple have got themselves into such a mess. And the first wish to clean it up was to break the news to mom about her dreary duds. <laughs> but perfection is fleeting because some bad news has sedate Sean seething. So you're not gonna be able to MC the wedding? Yeah, okay, maybe not. But still, they've got to find somebody who can host their big day. Yeah, wait till I tell Polly this one. Good thing they kept their third wish handy. In true blase Sean form, he calls Polly, Polly calls Michael, Michael calls Jane, and Jane calls Polly. Would it be possible, Jane, for you to MC our wedding? And this is your wish. Oscar, I'm gonna be MC at the wedding. <laughs> Now, on top of everything else, I've got to go and MC this wedding. My goodness, what a mess. But Jane puts that fire on the back burner because she's still got wish two to contend with. Polly wants her dad at the wedding, but she's got to meet him halfway. To try and make this wish come true, I asked him if he would come to the wedding. He felt as though he hadn't been properly invited. He felt it was a generic invitation. When I said, what will it take? for you to be there. He said, if she will come and ask me, then yes. Well, to be honest, Jean, I'm, I'm pleased with the news, but I'm disappointed at the same time. I've sent him an invitation. I called him, no word. You know, family is definitely very important, especially at an occasion like a wedding. You could actually have closure if you wanted to before your wedding day. And if at the end of that meeting he says no, but at least you can walk down the aisle and know you tried everything. Jane, we just don't have time. We've seen the list together. We know that our time is very valuable. I've taken the steps to invite him to the wedding. And if he's going to play games? No, I don't think he's playing games. I really don't. Have the meeting, and then you can move on in your marriage. Yeah. Are you willing to meet? Mm-hmm. So with only one day to go, the rudderless wedding party tries to forge ahead without the distracted couple. Well, we don't have anything to do because the stuff isn't here. We're, we're short on Polly. So to persuade bullheaded dad to come to the wedding, Jane makes another trip, and this time with Ammo, a neglected daughter and her husband-to-be. Why is he being so stubborn? Hello? Sean? Hi, Peter. Okay. No, come on over. What? Come on over. Come on in. Uh, Peter, what's the problem? Just come on in. No problem. Oh, honestly, we've come out all this way. Yeah? We've sent you an invitation to our wedding, and we're getting all this <laughs> Peter, I really don't get this. I really don't get okay, this. Then. What is the problem? You won't come to my wedding? You don't communicate with me? You don't send me... Christmas cards? I'm the one who calls you on your oh, birthday? Wait, wait. You are an oh. You are. You oh. truly, truly are. And I've oh, okay. st extended the olive branch to oh, you right now. Oh, and this is your chance to accept it. Okay. You should be at the wedding. No, I don't think I will. Okay. I'm ready to go. No, I don't think I will. I don't. Can you tell me why? It's just my for me. And that's all I get. Yeah, have a good day, though. Still have to do it. It's such a waste of our time. I've had some challenges in my life, but I've never been a mediator, a diplomat, a family counselor, and everything else rolled into one. And tonight I've had to be everything. Polly and Sean's big day is here. 
Oh, it's very hectic. They've asked Jane Deus Hinge for three wishes, and so far, she's granted two. Yay. Mom's dress is A-list, and at the last minute, Jane has agreed to MC their wedding. You want me to be your MC? But there's no telling if her efforts behind the scenes have swayed Dad to show his face. He should be there. He's my father. But this is no time for sentimentality, even though it's, you know, a wedding. We have got so much to do at this wedding. But Jane is feeling sentimental and just can't help throwing more fairy godmother dust around. So Candyman Michael is assigned to the groomsmen. Giddy, giddy, giddy. Okay, guys, you look fabulous. I'm out the door. I'll see you in a bit. You gotta make sure you're there. You have your jobs. I gotta go. Okay, bye. Gotta go. The boys are looking, uh, pastel -y. But what about Polly? Over the past 10 days, she's been working it to fit in her dress. And the moment of truth has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Polly's relief may be short-lived, because at this late hour, there's still no sign of distant dad. But the show must go on with or without him. I'd be extremely hurt if he didn't show up. Now, after all that heartache, I really hope that Polly's dad can find it in his heart to come to this wedding. But this wedding has been in holding pattern long enough. But then, look who shows up just in the nick of time. To everyone's surprise, Dad's had a last minute change of heart. The last time I saw Polly's dad, it was like trying to bring peace in the Middle East. And to think that he's here today, does my heart good. With the stage finally set, Polly joins Sean at the altar. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, till death do us part. Sean, will you give yourself to Polly to be your husband? I will. And Polly, will you give yourself to Sean to be his wife? I will. So vows have been exchanged, and Peacemaker Jane has brought the whole family together. It's wonderful to have it's family wonderful. at your wedding. Yeah. It means a lot. She's happy. That's, that's what I care about. Sean and I are truly ready to move on with our lives. We're ready for that fresh beginning. And then Jane goes outside to meet the Brits. I am genuinely delighted that you're here. It was a nightmare for me at the beginning when Polly said she wanted to get married, because all I could think of was it just be me at the wedding, me and Polly, nobody else. And, I was so delighted that Peter was able to come and, and show true spirit. And we've had a lovely day. She looked beautiful. Our yeah, daughter looked did. lovely, didn't yeah, she? she did. She looked very nice indeed. So you pulled it off for us, Jane. Thank you so much. Welcome to Polly and Sean's wedding. Getting Polly's dad to the wedding was mission nearly impossible. But luckily, the third wish to MC this shindig is right up Jane's alley. My name is Jane Dose Hinch, and I am Sean and Polly's wedding planner. Your bride and bride. I actually love MCing. Of course, I'm doing it British style. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! I think Polly and Sean have had the most wonderful, wonderful wedding day. We're really thankful to Jane that she was able to pull, pull everything together, all the wishes off. That's wonderful. And we're all here today. Mm -hmm. We had a wonderful day, beautiful wedding. We couldn't have done it without Jane. She looks gorgeous. Yeah. It's a bit of competition at some time. She's know. that good looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my dad came, and yeah. he surprisingly had a fantastic time, and I think he was very moved by it all. Jane, I've got to thank you so much for it all. The wish for Peter to be here was one of the... Well, I think it is the hardest wish I've ever had to grant. I never, ever thought I could pull that off. And to top it all off, Polly's dad is helping them build their life together. Thank you. He's giving us a money to help us towards buying our first house. We had every heartstring pulled. Karen and Kevin are knee deep in hotties. Whoa, hot here. I mean, hot water with their Scottish wedding plans. I would know where to start. Bridesmaids' dresses are not bonny. These we were Halloween yeah. costumes. Yeah. And the groomsmen like their bevies. I'm getting hammered. Will Jane have to walk 500 miles? Go away! It's like a war zone. And then, will she have to walk 500 more? Nice and easy. Uh, 
Uh, so there's a few checks on my list and none on yours right now. Not busy. I should have known you'd say that. When Kevin met Karen in Scotland, neither felt like they were in the Premier League. Yeah, we met at um, my friend's uh, birthday party. I don't think it was an instant attraction for either of us. Nothing special. <laughs> special enough, though, for cheeky Kevin to take the next step a few years later. It was a complete shock to me when he proposed. I was going to do it eventually one day, so... And, uh, she just happened to be the lucky one. But lucky for Kevin, Karen wears the kilt in the relationship. I think we love each other because he's, he's learned how to say yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> and when it comes to the wedding that is 14 days away, Karen also wields the power, whether she likes it or not. I think he's letting me do the wedding because he doesn't want to. If anything goes wrong, it's not my fault. Every week I sort of compile a new list of what has to get done, and uh, lately that list is actually getting longer than shorter. And wasting time on fruitless missions for bridesmaids' dresses isn't helping matters. There's a lot of hideous colors available. I wonder why that is. After spending about eight hours in a, in a store trying on various dresses, we decided to get them made. We went for the second dress fitting today, which is supposed to be the second last one, and they looked terrible on. Karen, it doesn't fit. It's too short. It won't do up. It's horrific. Great. Good luck. You're supposed to say I'll be there for you. Oh, yeah. Yes, dear. <laughs> I don't want any little hiccups. Kevin? Uh, Kevin, input? Yeah, and I would maybe try and break 90 on my golf as well, so. <laughs> Surely his priority isn't just golf. The first thing he did plan for the wedding was stags. OK, golf and stags. Oh, and uh, beer. Anything else? Yeah, I was actually meant to get the, the marriage license last week, but I uh, forgot to go. Ah! So if there is any complications, we, we could be having a big party with no actual wedding. Not if superstar wedding planner Jane Deus Hinch has anything to say about it. She's here to grant this lad and lassie three wedding wishes, and her assistant Michael will help her to drag this wedding out of the bog and into the light. Hi, Jane. Karen. So after some quick introductions, Karen is switched to on. Having problems with the hotel where we're having the service, trying to get a rehearsal, because it's not a typical church, two aisles. It's three separate parts, and you really can't walk people through it without actually being there. Half the wedding party is from Scotland, and we can't do it earlier than the night before the wedding, and they won't guarantee us the room. At the moment, Karen talks for both of them. Kevin? Kevin! Haven't done our vows yet. And then Kevin stirs, and the brogue comes out. <laughs> no, we're not written. No? No. We're yeah. uh, taking them out of a book. This is a good Scottish accent. Are we having kilts then at the yeah. wedding? Yeah. Are we having a wee dram somewhere <laughs> along the line? A who what now? Yeah. That could be what part of the problem yeah. as well, actually. They, uh, we're having an open what a bar. a problem with Scots drinking? Yeah. Never. Aw, Jane, stereotypes, honestly? And they've been psyched since we told them that they can drink all night free of charge. Oh, honestly? Because it's an open bar and they'll just, they'll go mad. Knowing Scots and their drinking habits, I'd be concerned. But if everyone's drunk, they won't notice the bridesmaids' ugly dresses. So after the dress fitting today, we were all a little nervous um, that they're going to look like Shamu's walking down the aisle. <laughs> oh so I'm hearing a lot from the bride, not so much from yeah, the bridegroom. I can't get a word in there, Joyce. <laughs> What's the big stress factor for you? Hoping I can play 18 holes in the morning off the, the wedding, really. OK, I can see the stress. This is your wedding as well, you know. Yeah. Why is it then that Karen's doing everything? I just thought I'd leave it to people who know what they're doing. And are you happy with this? Yes or no, uh, you know, every once in a while I'll be like, you know, you could ask me how things are going. And I do sometimes, when I remember. If I come home and I say, I want this, and he goes, no, I don't want that, then we argue until I win. <laughs> so if I don't tell him and I just do it, then I'm already getting what I want. So how do we know then that Kevin's going to be happy on the day? Because I'm going to be happy. There you go. He just does what he's told. Now the couple sheepishly herds Jane out to their ceremony site. It's a really awkward space with three sections of seating, different entrances. Wedding layout. It's, it's like a maze. And ever so blustery. We'll be walking down on one side, but there'll be seats here and we're going to walk down here. I'm having a hard time actually picturing this. Are you? I'm a little concerned, yes. Nobody can see and hear. No, it wouldn't be my first choice. I'm completely lost. They could see the minister in the back of my dress. If it's this windy and he's wearing a kilt, we could be <laughs> saying a lot more. Meow. Easy. I'm going to go and put a, a plan together. 
and then we know what we're trying to work on here. That was uh, rather surprising, the wind. I didn't think about wind. Well, prepare to be blown away, kids, because Jane has a plan in hand so that this wedding can actually happen in 12 days' time. I didn't think it was that bad. That's long. Jane unveiled the board. I thought Karen hasn't been doing her job properly. <laughs> Shall we start at the top? The ceremony site, this gives me a lot of cause for concern. You know, I kind of feel like I'm I should be leaving it to the professionals the people that work here who know this space, for them it's just a function. We haven't got a marriage license. Uh, none of this is actually possible unless someone goes and gets the marriage license. Yeah, I was meant to get that last week. Kevin. I'll do that. OK. You volunteered very well there, Kevin. <laughs> and it needs to be all put into an itinerary to make the day work. So you know what time you're playing golf from, too. Vows, the two of you still need to do that. You look puzzled, Kevin. Yeah. Is this how it's always going to be? Is it? <laughs> Priceless. You've still got a speech to write, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, look. Eight. I've got to do everything. <laughs> you gave me a few tasks that I have to do. I can't actually remember all that now. Oh, Kevin, we hardly knew ye. You have bridesmaids with no dresses. And I haven't forgotten about the open bar and everything that that brings with it. As you know, I am a fairy godmother, and I can grant you three wishes. And they're sort of all brought out in one list at one time. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, that is a lot of stuff to do when you're still working. There were so many things that were still... that had to be done. I just thought she'd already done them. Great. So that night, instilled with the fear of Jane, the couple gets to work. Well, at least Karen does. If you have the kilts ready, if you have, if you have to get kilts for them, if they're gonna get them back home. No, okay. Uh, you've gotta still do the full list for pickups for everyone at the airport. So I'll uh, add that to the list of things to do. Okay, I'm updating everything that we've already spent and where we are with the budget. So we're $20,000 over the budget. Karen and Kevin are getting married in 11 days, and so far the chaos is beating them 10 to nil. It doesn't fit. Great. But premier wedding goalkeeper Jane Deus Hinch is here to grant them three wishes to turn the score around. Is this how it's always going to be? Yeah. Today, our laid-back Scott is being shaken and stirred because the bride is putting him to work. We have, uh, I think it's 49 people from Scotland booked to come over. This is the spreadsheet that I put together for all the airport pickups. You know, I've just basically pimped him out as a taxi driver. So it's got here, the airline, the airport they come into because we have to make sure half of them are Hamilton. Hamilton? Uh, Hamilton, yeah. So what are you going to be doing when I'm doing that? I was thinking of going to get my nails done. I'll be doing everything else. So I need to know that if I print this off and give it to you, that it's as good as done. It's as good as done. <laughs> <sighs> that worries me. Well, cross your fingers, sister, because you're also entrusting him to find another ceremony venue all by himself. And the first one is hotter than cockaleeky soup. They're going to die up there, especially if they're all guys are in rural kilts. So it's off to number two. Hmm, a rooftop sweat lodge or a funeral home? So it's on to number three. And watch out for that tree. I don't think this place would work as a venue. It's just, it's just far too hot. So three strikes. And since it's so last minute, it's back to square one and two and three. I just don't know how we're going to make it work, so we need Jane. It's time to use wish number one. So Jane hurries over and meets the concerned couple within the hour. So we're, we're sold on here. Yeah. We're stuck with here. We're stuck mm. with here. Okay. Which is why you're here. I need you to organize this for us with everything. So to be given the venue now to organize with chairs, let's get down to business. But Giggles the Scot just capitulates readily. I have no clue. I mean, no, we have to start. Yes, it's a wedding, but we're talking almost theater. We've got a piper that's got to make his entrance. He starts from here. Waterfall, Piper. And then he walks out to meet the girls. So Jane puts the puzzle pieces together and walks Kevin and Karen through her carefully laid out plan. Definitely, I like the way she's got the, all the different entrances. I hadn't thought of that. We probably would have done one walk-in of everybody, and uh, 
this is a great way of making sure that everybody feels a part of the, of the service. Yeah, that's all swell, but what's with the Rambo choppers? Can you hear some of my challenges? I'm actually shouting over the bells, the helicopters and the waterfall. Can you imagine getting married in this? It's like a war zone. I really think that without her, this could have been a disaster. But the skies are only getting busier because with only eight days to the wedding, the flights from the motherland are trickling in. Well, I'm actually waiting for my mum, mum's friend, my brother and his wife, and my two nieces. But Karen isn't in the best shape to greet the in-laws. I showed you my bruise yesterday. You drink seven shots of tequila straight in a row, that's what happens. It was her handmade. <laughs> and she's, uh, she's worried about me drinking. Aha, uh -huh. so who's the pot calling the kettle drunk? Well, tap the kegs because the Scots have arrived. So while Kevin and Karen work on collecting the family, Jane's assistant Michael works on measuring out layouts for the venue. Minus 10 plus 17 is 10. 10. 10 what? Plus. Stupid tapes! Can somebody turn the waterfall off, please? And though he looks smashing in the tool belt, he's just, well, smashing. But eventually, Jane's little grasshopper gets the groove of it all. Walk to your groove. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. And you. That'll work. Karen and Kevin are tying the knot, but their blustery ceremony location is a tangled mess. It's sort of like a maze. So Jane Deus Hinch has granted the couple the first of three wedding wishes piece together this puzzling ceremony site. Today, with only five days to the wedding, the bridesmaid dresses are ready. Ready for what is the question? I'm not sure this is going to work. That one actually looks the closest. Ooh. Oh, wow. I don't know what we want to do about this, but I know that this is not the dresses you guys were hoping to have. These we were Halloween that. costumes. I have one solution. We can call Jane and ask for a wish for new dresses. Help. Help, help. It's time to call Jane. So Karen radios for emergency fashion assistance and Michael intercepts. Hi, Karen. Yeah, it's Mike. Hi, Mike. No, can you, I need to speak to Jane, please. I, I have a small emergency here. Big emergency, actually. Hold on. She's freaking out. She's freaking out. Hello? No, I'm not actually OK. Um, we don't have bridesmaid's dresses. I need to call in wish number two. I need you to get me bridesmaid dresses. I have lots of contacts in that department. Mike and I'll get right onto it. Meanwhile, Kevin is looking to tie one on, and bad news travels fast. I'm waiting to find out now about the colour of the dresses, and I just want to know how quickly you guys can turn around and make a tie. Hopefully, almost as quickly as Jane and Michael get on the case of dressing the bridesmaids. I need you to find three bridesmaids' dresses in three different sizes, and I need them in three days. Thank you. Hi there, yes, I need to buy um, three bridesmaids dresses, three months. Hi there, yes, I'm trying to buy three bridesmaid dresses by this Friday. Jane, I think I found someone. It's Suzanne, so tomorrow we can come. Is that good? Hello, Suzanne. Hello, it's Jane Dias Hinch. Yes. No, we'll be right over. OK, bye-bye. Jane shows Michael how it's done in her world, and they're off. Suzanne. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. <laughs> nice to see you. This is Mike, my Hi, assistant. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My SOS is that I have a bride who is having a Scottish wedding, mm -hmm. and she has three bridesmaids with no dresses. Oh, goodness. Now, this is okay. what we've got to match to. I need to look through and see. Okay. Well, at least that. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it amethyst? No. Which part of the word no don't you understand? That would look really nice. That's that very hot. Really nice. Yeah. So, Jane and Suzanne and uh, Michael shortlist a few choices for the frantic bride to peruse. We have selection. Jane, Karen, Hi, girls. Hello, girls. It's time to get sexy, girls. Time to get sexy. With only three days to go, Jane's selection has to work wonders. Come on, girls. Anticipation is killing me. That's gorgeous. That one looks really good as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. That one's too chill. It's such a flowy dress. Oh, that totally suits you. Where there's a will, there's, there's a, a way. way. Absolutely. <laughs>
Oh, that's beautiful. This is your dress, this is your dress, and that's your dress. Fabulous. Is this making it real for our bride? Yeah. I don't think I realized how maybe stressed I was about this until I felt the amount of relief. And they've gone for something a bit more contemporary, three different styles to complement her theme. Looks fabulous. Karen is delighted. Wish granted. Is that your wish granted, Karen? Absolutely. Jane has saved us from having to buy cheap dresses off a rack in a mall. But today is the day before the wedding, and Jane still has more work to complete wish one. Make sense of their wacky ceremony site. It's rehearsal time, and Jane leads the flock. This is how it will start. The piper comes up here, not that fast, and comes and stands there. He's now going to play. He then goes down there. One, two, three. Are you in your places? Excuse me, excuse me, we've got bride coming through. Long rehearsal, I don't know. It's a lot of things to remember for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting nervous now. Aha, so Kevin's nervous, but he's also a little somber because someone's missing from the equation. I just found out that my uh, brother might not make it to the wedding. His uh, passport was ripped and then apparently not going to let him on the flight. But apparently, getting ripped is the theme of the evening. And Karen sees it all as a sign of things to come. We're drinking all night. We're going over on the way. We're golfing. We're drinking on the course. Especially if he's out with Alec, he'll be hammered. I'm really concerned that um, we need to limit the drinking. You know, I don't want it to be a complete drunken mess. So thankfully, sensible Karen has kept one wish in her back pocket and makes a call to the Temperance League, or at least to Jane. Right. Yeah, I wish is please keep my groom and his friends sober on the day of the wedding. Mm, I might just have the right person for that job. Karen and Kevin needed some divine wedding intervention from nuptial fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch. She granted them three wishes to save their wedding. Wish one was to make the ceremony site actually fit a ceremony. Wish two had Jane and the bridesmaids swathed in chiffon. Fabulous. And for the final wish, the bride wants the groom to stay off the sauce on their wedding day. So today's the big day, and Michael's angling for a hole-in-one because he's on course to get the boys to just say no. Gentlemen, I hope we're not drinking cocktails. Jane will be livid, and I'll lose my job. Never oh, touch the drop. Never oh. touch the thing. Beer? No, no beer, no beer, no beer, no beer. That's OK. Watch yourself. There you go. Shoot. Away with the beer. And seeing that it was bye-bye beer? Bye-bye beer. It was bye-bye Michael. Meanwhile, it looks like the lasses are the ones getting liquored. Thanks for staying sober, honey. <laughs> uh, sober might be a strong word. There's nothing in there. <laughs> but laughs subside when Kevin finds out that he doesn't have a hotel room. I don't have anything for Kevin. Ah, there's a piper down. It's not that Karen Bruce thing. Nothing under Karen Bruce? Yeah. Kevin can't get into a room yet. I'm trying to get a hold of him. Um, for some reason, the room isn't ready yet, so he is still waiting to get dressed, and the car's picking him up in less than half an hour. And finally, Kevin is paying attention. <laughs> I know he's probably stressed and nervous, so I feel bad for him, because I'm not. But luckily, the hotel found Kevin a room. And lucky for Michael, he has found the den of shirtless men. How you doing? Focus, Michael. Focus. Business, not pleasure. You're having a beer. You're having a beer in the shower. We've said we weren't supposed to be drinking. Very cute. Cute. Very, very cute. Very sexy. That's bad. Where's the groom? <laughs> Woo, it's getting hot in here. I gotta go. It's getting hot in here. Meanwhile, Jane is also deeply involved with a Scotsman who has nice pipes. I have a piper, but no guests. Are they drinking? And Michael, ever the professional, goes back to see if the boys are still shirtless or drinking. Hi. I've lost the rings. You lost the rings? No, they're gonna be here. Are they all here? Oh, you <laughs> wanker. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. But the sound of the pipes finally calls the troops to battle. And the Brigadier General seeks out Karen. I hope she's here. But sadly, Kevin's brother still isn't. All right. You didn't quite make that. And Jane wants to make sure that Karen's champagne breakfast didn't carry on into a boozy brunch. This is the bride's prerogative. So tough. But Karen arrives fresh as a daisy. And Jane sets out to stage manage the complicated production.
Okay. Nice and easy. And luckily, air traffic is at a minimum, so wedding bells can ring out loud and clear. Karen and Kevin, true love is eternal. Kevin, will you take Karen as your wife? And Karen, will you take Kevin as your husband? You may seal your wedding bells for the kids. It was the best wish for me to organize the venue. Three different entrances. I needed roller skates. But Jane's race doesn't end there. She still has one more baton to carry. Give me an ETA. Okay. Kevin's one brother had problems, as some of you may have heard. He was supposed to be an usher today. It was so devastating that he missed the ceremony and very upsetting for the family. But in true Scott form, Kevin's brother gets there just in time to party. And Jane makes certain that he gets a true Highlander welcome. So they got four wishes. Today, they join us one. And didn't it all come together in that room? The day just wouldn't have been what it was if it wasn't for Jane. Yeah, she did a good job. Bridesmaids dresses as well. Absolutely fantastic. They all look absolutely gorgeous. Keeping Kevin sober. So I think actually Kevin needed a drink. The SOS, all three wishes, perfect. You see, I said we timed it in between this. And we're done. <laughs> When getting married is deja vu. I thought, to the best of my knowledge, I was divorced. Your venue looks ew. This is the actual, this is the reception itself. No. And the groomsmen leave you wondering what to do. Oh, the party was what I came for. Who are you going to call? Superstar wedding planner, Jane Deus Hinch. I never had such a sinking feeling in all my life. A bit like the one I've got now. Oh, my divorce. But will ghosts of a wedding past haunt the present? If I don't get that piece of paper, I can't get married. We both love cats. This one is my engagement present. <laughs> Are you doing a lot of work on your wedding right now, too? Uh, a feline-loving female sought out a kooky for cougars man. Found Amanda on our website, right? We're not going to say which one, but... Ah, so it's that kind of romance. But something clicked because they moved in faster than you can say sexy singles. It was like two weeks later. She asked me to move in with them, yeah. and then I moved in the following Friday. Impulse. So we did everything as according to what started us off, and so far, so far, right? And so far, how are the old wedding plans going? Mom? How would I describe this wedding? I have no idea what we're going to do. I would say, hasty. So it's nine days? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Disorganized. I haven't even seen the place where we're, ha we're having this ceremony. I just hope nobody falls apart. Surely they have some things under control. Oh, I've got my earrings, too. Dodged a bullet there. But is there anything else, Amanda? My feelings on the best man are... I don't want my day to go badly. Meet the boys, a bride's worst nightmare. Oh, the party was what I came for. My best man got into a bit of a tiff at a poker game that we were at. There's one guy who can mess it all up. Yeah. If it can happen, he's the guy. It's now an issue because it bothers her that he had such an outburst and an uncontrollable outburst at that, that she doesn't want him to be at the wedding as my best man. I don't want anything causing a stir in the wedding. And uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to be embarrassed. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough situation to deal with. So Sean's got some work cut out for him. How about Amanda? What do you have on your list? All I care about is looking pretty. <laughs> I could marry her in a dark alley for all. I... <laughs> but uh, no, 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 that's not what I mean. though. you know what I mean. Ah, they're so cute at that age. Not. He tells me, Mom, I've never done a wedding before. He doesn't know what it entails. Well, you're not supposed to have done a wedding before. Well, sure, you're not supposed to have done a wedding before, but eh, marriage happens. I thought, to the best of my knowledge, I was divorced. Wait, I'm no lawyer, but don't you need some kind of official, like, piece of paper? Four days before the wedding, we have to go down to Napanee. 
I need to pick up my divorce certificate. Considering how we like to think of ourselves as pretty normal people, things are pretty bad. If we don't get that divorce certificate, we won't be able to get married on our wedding day. If I didn't have so many other things on my mind right now, I would cry. <laughs> I mean, nine days before the wedding, she's got to worry about the divorce papers, um, the food, her parents, our parents meeting for the very first time. It is bad. Without Jane, I'm not going to be a happy bride. Well, wedding dream weaver Jane Dayas Hinch and her assistant Michael have heard the call of the bride and are here to grant them three wishes to slap some sensible magic into this wedding. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Sean and Amanda. Exactly. Yes. I got your wedding SOS. Well, but why are we here? This is a reception itself. No. It's a community centre. It's for bingo and bridge and bake sales, but not for a wedding. How many people? About 100. Right. Now, the main thing is that day, you can only get in here to decorate for one o'clock. Why? There's a function first thing in the morning here. And what's the function? I'm not exactly sure. Oh, let's just say it's a kid's party and it's just gonna be trashed. Thing is, I don't really have that many people who will actually be able to be here to help. Won't this... the caterer do that? We're not having a caterer. Who's doing the catering then? That's what my mother needs to have sorted out because she is going to sample of food. She is going on Sunday to try a new restaurant. That's a takeaway. That could be a huge problem. Yeah, very huge problem. And I really don't want to see my mother serving food at my wedding. But... No. It's just not really the picture of a wedding, is it? And that picture keeps getting prettier. Our, our friends and family are not that picky. and They'll appreciate the fact that we're keeping as level-headed as possible. Cheap, 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 cheap. Well, especially with paper plates. I mean, there's no need to have plates and china here. At... I'm going to be served hot curry and spicy food on paper plates. Cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> Suddenly they're wearing it. So that sure. makes me very nervous. And if you've ever been to a wedding or a party yeah. and the... She's never been to a wedding. Oh, OK. I've been so on top before. of being a man, I've never been, been, been to a wedding before. before. Yes, and my divorce is actually just going through on Friday. <laughs> You see that in right now, this <laughs> Oh, I just slipped that one yeah. in. I was not expecting at any point somebody saying, and my divorce papers don't come through till two days before. No, I wasn't expecting that one. My mum went to find out at the courthouse where my divorce certificate was. She said, sorry, but your uh, papers were never filed. I never had such a sinking feeling in all my life. A bit like the one I've got now. OK. There is no wedding. As we stand at this moment, for five different reasons, there is no wedding at the moment. So you've done all this before? Not really, because I, I was there. Add one more thing. You want to add what? You add as much as you can. I just feel can. that I have to. Yeah, our parents have never met. That yeah, our be. parents have never met. No. no. <laughs> Can't wait to get my teeth into this one. Let's get going. So many tasks, I can't even believe to tell you. How many days are in their week? And how many problems can you do in a week? So Jane gets to work on a plan of action to right this couple's mountain of wrongs. These boards are quite big. I've had to write very small. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're going to have a wall big enough for that. This is your plan. Can we frame that? It is framed. <laughs> Don't. Anything underlined in red? is critical. The ceremony and the service, you've never been there, you don't know what happens there. If you want to have something make you nervous, it'll be that. Unless we get divorce papers through on Tuesday, we won't get the marriage licence on Wednesday. Who's going to be checking up on that? We're both going. We're both going. Oh, how fabulous. I don't like being in charge. I like somebody else doing it for me. I've never had to plan a wedding that is in such a mess in such a short space of time. Ooh. <laughs> Catering. I put it as a heading, and it's giving me a headache. I can't really see how, with the budget that we have, that we can actually get those things done without involving family members. This, to me, is going to make or break your wedding. And, of course, we said the decorations for here to make it look like a wedding, not an empty community hall with some tables put in. Mm -hmm. You think you've got something nailed down and really 
You don't, it, it hurts, but I mean, what can we do? This is your plan, but I'm your fairy godmother, and I can give you three wishes. Sweet. I don't think I've ever known a wedding that has ever needed three wishes more than this one. If they don't use those three wishes wisely, there is no wedding. Amanda and Sean are getting married in six days, and they're getting smoked by all that needs doing. Anything underlined in red is critical. <laughs> wedding fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch has granted them three wishes to jumpstart this jalopy wedding. Things are pretty bad. But today, on Jane's directive, our couple is determined to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I called them earlier. I said, can we look at the hall tonight? Can we have tables set up? Oh, yeah, sure, it won't be a problem. But the sow isn't cooperating very well at all. Uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, apparently she doesn't know who I spoke to or why that they would say such a thing because there was a function that they had booked already, so. So the next obvious step for the couple, go home and play with the cats. They seem to have the assurance that because I'm here, everything is going to be fine. Not necessarily so, unless they do everything they've got to do. So with only five days before the wedding, Amanda tackles something high up on her to-do list, find the money box. Oh, look at this little I'm thinking the treasure chest look is kind of hot. At my last wedding, I didn't spend any time with my ex. I spent all my time dancing with the kids. This one looks kind of like a really old look. So I think we're going to go with either Moby Dick or War and Peace. Since it's a wedding, I think maybe Moby Dick. And then we can always put it in our library after. Perfect! A pretend book for a pretend library. But speaking of Moby Dicks, Sean is having a whale of a time trying to tame the groomsmen. We've got four days to resolve that issue, and I plan on doing it in the next four days. What we gotta do is we gotta Xbox. So that's going well. But later that day, Amanda gets Sean off the couch and back to the venue for another attempt at transforming a pumpkin community center into a fairy tale wedding venue. Or can that, those tables be moved a little bit just to... And even though the layout is kind of making sense... It's not quite the scale, but don't forget about back-to-back -back chairs. Something else is becoming painfully clear. They need Jane. Decorating is the main thing that I am concerned about. Well, we're trying to set this up as best as possible, or at least I'm trying to do to scale it. My problem is that we don't have a way of setting this up in time for us to be ready. So basically, please make this room look as magical as possible. Magical. I can't hang anything. You cannot hang anything. You, you cannot, can't put anything on the walls. You cannot. I know it's a tall order for Jane, but if anybody can pull it off, it's her. Do I have a real fairy wand? A real fairy wand. I think I might be needing one. <laughs> Whether she needs a wand or a gin and tonic, Jane mulls it over back at HQ while her assistant Michael does some fairy dusting. I can't put anything on the walls. I can't hang anything from the ceiling. Bubbles. Can't have any naked flames. I do not know how I am gonna... Michael, what are you doing? I'm just dusting the light. Light. So while Jane and Michael work on lighting up the couple's lives, Sean's mother is testing out the food and the uh, disposable china for the reception. Chickens all white meat. Let me check in the kitchen. Ideally, white meat Let is me butter. first, all right? Okay. I do have a couple of other alternatives. However, they are very far away. I'll try this dark meat. Oh, so bad. This is one of the plates that they are using at the wedding. And today, I'm going to try and uh, see how the food actually holds up. I think that'd be okay. Yeah. It's uh, pretty sturdy. They would have delivery, but they wouldn't have somebody to serve it. I wish they had spoken to me. Um, I know so many Indian restaurants where I could have had this, the whole thing done with proper seating and serving and everybody would have been in a nice classy atmosphere with the right ambience and all that. Well, at least everyone will be able to see what they're eating because now Jane has help with wish number one. This is the delightful community centre. Right. Wow. Which I've got to make magical. Now, mm -hmm. you cannot hang anything from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything on the walls. Mm -hmm. So I am left with this, how do I make it magical? And I thought of you. Thanks. Thanks. Jeez, y'all heart. Jane has the man, and now they're working mm -hmm. on a plan. Highly 
illuminated with two exit signs. I hope he's got a magic wand, one with high wattage. It's only four days before their wedding and the most critical issue is still left untouched. So today, Sean and Amanda are scheduled to make the four-hour road trip to pick up the divorce papers. That is, if they can separate themselves from the bed. Sean and Amanda are getting married in four days, and their wedding is a big old mess. I'm just worried that it's not going to happen. And if anyone can make it happen, it's Jane Deus Hinch. We're going to need a miracle for this one. But before Amanda and Sean can actually tie the knot, the bride that was needs to untie her first one. I need to pick up my divorce certificate. If I don't get that piece of paper, I can't get married. So, yeah, it's definitely a crisis. But on pickup day? The pair of them have slept in. And they've had to race to go and get these divorce papers. Can't wait to see how this one works out. And so Jane heads off to meet the hopefully newly divorced bride and her husband-to-be? Wait, is that right? We've come to get a very official piece of paper. What if I told you this wasn't the right piece of paper? It's the right one. Ooh, a kidder. At least someone's enjoying herself. So now we're going to move to the council chambers where we're actually going to do the ceremony, and then I'll go over the pre-meeting with you then. Perfect. This is it! Wow. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Sure, <laughs> especially for meeting over city bylaws and parking infractions. I'll introduce you as the new Mr. and Mrs. And to celebrate that occasion, you can ring our ship's bell. Oh, it's all right. And then you can move out there to the gardens and what have you. I think it was good to be here today so that they could see it and make it real. But a real problem is that this wedding factory is pumping them out like so much sausage. The only things that I can see now that we need to resolve with this is having a wedding beforehand and a wedding after and you being in the middle. And if the weather isn't right, you're going to have all their guests in here and we're trying to come through as well. I'm not going to be able to say, you be here, you be there. Uh, it's kind of going to chance. But Jane doesn't believe in this wacky concept known as chance. Do you think we could have you be our stage manager? <laughs> to be here with a couple that don't know what's going on and their guests don't know what's going on? Great. Let me be in charge. There is no rehearsal. So to me, to be here and organize all of that, I would, I would really like to do that for you. And kind of round up all the cattle and make sure they get herded to the right place. <laughs> I wouldn't quite put it like that. Well, no, but... So Jane has her second wish. Meanwhile, Michael is working on the first wish and is drawn to the lights of Chinatown. And of course, our boy can't resist a good hat when he sees it. Wow. We need six of those. I'm all set. I'm ready to go. Meanwhile, with only three days to the wedding, Sean's mother is cooking to the cows come home to try to beef up the Indian takeaway for the reception and reduce costs for Sean and Amanda. My biggest wish is that I don't have to serve this food on Friday. Hi, Sean. Yeah, hi. Hi, what's wrong? We don't have anybody to serve it. They cannot supply me anybody to serve. Okay, well... It's not every day my son gets married. So, um, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Bye. Sean's mom has spoken. And so no mom plus no money equals hello, Jane. Where are we at with the catering and the menu? How did mum get on? She says everything is booked, everything is set, and it will be delivered. Now, this is the only thing we'd like to have a bit of your help with. Can you please... As a, was it our second or our third wish? How many wishes we have now? Meow. This is definitely number three. Meow. Meow. So for our third wish, meow. Meow. we would like to see if you would be able to meow. Meow. Uh, help alleviate the burden from our moms with the catering. Having someone outside of the family. Three good wishes. To make these things happen for us is a huge blessing. Tomorrow is Wednesday, the wedding is on Friday, so I've got two days. I don't know, am I going to bed in between? <laughs> we need to work out how the two mums aren't working on the wedding day. So you need a whole bunch of minions like me? Lots of minions. Catering minions, catering students. George Brown College. Let's go. Let's go, George Brown College. All right. So before you can say blue plate special, Jane seeks out silver servers in training. I cannot have the two mums working on a wedding day. Although we're dealing with paper plates and plastic cutlery, we're actually going to be doing 
silver service. We are professionals. We are going to give a professional service. Want to come and do a wedding? Get some experience? When planning their wedding, Sean and Amanda were up against the wall. We're going to need a miracle for this one. But Jane Day's Hinge, wedding planner with the mostest, has granted them three wishes to free them from wedding limbo. Wish three had Jane giving a class on class. Although we're dealing with paper plates and plastic cutlery, we're actually going to be doing silver service. And for wish two, Jane will keep the pace at the ceremony. We've got 15 minutes when you're done. Come okay. in. Thank you very much. Perfect. And today, it's wedding day, and Jane and Michael are making sure wish one to decorate the hall is being brought to light. How are we doing? On schedule, I think. On schedule? Out soon. Good. So after the twinkling gets tweaked... I take these out all by myself. Jane, if you're looking for me, I'm behind the curtain. The fairy lights get ferried, but the fairy princess is feeling flighty. I'm anxious and, and jittery. <laughs> but will the boys fly off the handle? Make him looking good, this guy. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. He's getting married. Mm -hmm. yeah, still trying to talk me out of it. And Michael's not the only one feeling jittery. Well, I'm a little nervous about the whole deal. Uh, Sean's first marriage, and he's a young fella. Just hope everything works out for him. So now Trace. we have to go to my place, and we have to get that tray and that um, table, table settings. settings. Or else we're both dead people. All right, let's go. Okay. Let's go. I got a hot date, people. Let's go. Here's, here's all the platters. Okay, this one's ready. Yep. yep. Perfect. All right, I'm out. Okay. I'll see you guys there. Be yep. on time. Yep, sure will. Swear to be on time. Yep. Meanwhile, the bride's in a tizzy over some tool. The crinoline that I have is not working with my dress. So if I get another crinoline, it may still not work with my shoes. So Amanda's sister races to fix the crinoline catastrophe, while Jane civilly engineers the ceremony. Who can help you do that? Who would know them? And Jane runs such a tight ship that even the bad boy groomsmen are in check. Oh, you just have a cigarette? Yeah. Okay. We've got 15 minutes when you're done. This is where it all starts. Yes. And it's um, three minutes to. Yeah. Where is everybody? Well, here's the bride. That's a start. There we are. You look stunning. Sean and Amanda have come here today to be joined in marriage. I promise to love you, comfort, and encourage you. Today, I, Helen Jean Amanda Rowe, choose you, Sean Richard Lavery, to commit myself to you for the rest of my life. You may have your first married kiss. If it wasn't for Jane, this wedding would not have been going together the way it is going so far. Everything is so perfect, and I'm so grateful. But the next wedding is on deck, so away we get, and a woman named Jane's work is never done. It's two wishes down, one to go. Here we are, five minutes to go. This next hour is going to go like that. At seven o'clock, I'm going to do the announcements, I'm going to bring bride and bridegroom through, and I'm going to do some filling. I'm going to make it up as I go along, but it'll sound very professional. <laughs> bride and groom have just arrived. You'll have to stall them for a minute. Harold, go with the bride and bridegroom. On your mark, get set, go! This place wasn't done by Jane, then there's no way that we would have been able to do anything for what we had to do through our days. So. I thought it was gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. Everything is definitely wedding-ish. Wedding-ish? I enlisted the help of my little minions who have worked so hard. They made this party into a wedding, a celebration of first class. That, I think, was the one thing that impressed me the most, was the amazing Huge. amount of Huge. people serving the food. I, I was flabbergasted when I saw all those people standing behind the counter, ready to go, and on top of everything, I appreciate everything that everyone has put into everything, this. Everything that was, everything that's been done is just amazing. If, ands, buts, regrets, that's not what weddings are for. Tomorrow, they're gonna wake up and go, didn't we have the most fabulous wedding? Go, Jane. Go, Jane. Woo, woo. Woo. This wedding is causing bride's bread panic. Don't say that. And Where this groom has caught the fever. I understand, we made a mistake. You telling me I made a okay. mistake does not fix the mistake. Okay, that's fine, so let's just keep going. Thank you. Will wedding planning superstar Jane Deasinch defuse the ticking tear bomb? Or will she weep tears of her own? My very wand is struggling today.
I don't really know why I get so emotional. Bride-to-be Pam's moods can go from zero to kooky in seconds. You know I want to be Cinderella. Well, Cinderella's getting married in 12 days, and her groom, Matt, better be well-stocked in tissue. I love you. And now here come the waterworks. But it seems like all the weeping has done wonders for her water retention. Pam has lost a lot of weight, so now they have to do major alterations. Because <laughs> I need this to be altered perfectly. She's had breakdowns and she's cried. She tries so hard. Yeah, maybe not hard enough, because like the bride's moods, their wedding plans are totally whacked. Our flowers, because we don't have any. Our decorations, because we don't have any. I don't even have the ceremony planned yet. Okay, just keep breathing, just keep breathing. Just keep breathing, just keep breathing. Well, breathe easy, kooky pants, because superstar wedding planner Jane Deasinge and her assistant Michael are here with three wishes to turn lemons into lemonade. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, what a welcome. I like my personal space. <laughs> You're so amazing. Oh, oh, I've never been hugged so much in my life. Doesn't she know I'm British? You don't do that. I got your wedding SOS. Yes. What seems to be the problem? What isn't a problem <laughs> should be the question. <laughs> really? So Pam spills her guts and rattles off a pretty normal laundry list of wedding issues. But then, oh wait, this ain't so normal. And my mother, who is my maid of honor, has made her dress. Your mother is your maid of honor? Is her dad the ring bearer? Now that we've done everything here in church, mm -hmm. shall we go and take a look at your reception venue? It's clean. It's very square. When it comes to the end of the wedding breakfast or the meal? We'll probably start in with the father-daughter dance. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find the dance to dance with my dad. Because <laughs> he wants a particular song to dance with. Why is this obsessing you so much? Because we, 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 like, literally... We can't find it. It's All Kinds of Everything by Ed Ames from 1952. Right. OK. Mike and I are going to put a plan together. You're a lifesaver. Thank you, Jane. So Jane manages to free herself from Pam's clutches and takes some serious action with her ink. Wow. Oh, my goodness. It's not that bad, is it? I always had the impression that we had a lot to do, but not this much. With all these different duties here, we have little icons. Those are so neat. <laughs> and so off she goes, much to the couple's dismay. Photographer, if you do have the budget, how many centerpieces do we need? That brings me nicely down to this issue with you can't find this one particular yeah. dance. You actually don't have a dress. <laughs> I've got this one, I just don't know if it fits. <laughs> it is daunting, but I'm your fairy godmother. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing that I bring with me is three wishes. <laughs> Only three. Oh, I know. With this, three? OK. I will give you the wishes but I want you to really think as to how you can use them, what you could use them for, and I'm here to help you. I'm exhausted already and we haven't even started. I promise you it'll be okay. Okay? Can you actually pass me a Kleenex, please? And every good wedding starts with a bride and a dress. But even after initial alterations, Weepy McTeary's dress is big enough for her and her maid of honor, uh, her mom. I want to take my dress I want to take my dress Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. How is that? Like, this looks like pearls. Like, it looks like it's pulled. <gasps> what is that? It's pilled. It's a process. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It'll be okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The train is good. I hope so. It's a gorgeous dress, but this is not Wonderful. There's, I mean, this needs to there's be so like three different. inches here that needs to come in. Three like, inches? Yeah. Don't say that. Oh. 
But even in her veil of tears, Pam sees clearly enough to know that only Jane can ease her pain. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I don't... I, I need to call Jane. I need help. So Jane arrives immediately to mop up the Pam puddles. Gosh, right. Still a lot of work to be done. That's not alteration. That's a whole reconstruction. Yeah, I think this is a, a desperate wish. So Jane is on her way to compress a dress, but the wedding posse is playing with plastic posies. You like this? No, that is hideous. You know what? I really think that we should just scrap the fake flowers altogether. I didn't think this was going to work with this flowers. Oh. I was against the purchase of this flowers from the beginning. I was also against the purchase of 32 of these glass things two years before <laughs> we were going to need them. Relax, Pam. Well, I'm just thinking of ways to make this work. I, I mean, for a, for a dollar, I don't think you can get a better jar. But, like, what's wrong with that? Like, I think that looks sharp. I think it looks too cheap with the fake flowers in it. I like the cellophane in it. I like the rocks in it. I do not yeah. like the flowers. Uh, OK. So it's no big deal. I just like Matt, being right every now and again. I, I am going to tell you, we're scrapping the fake flowers. I do not like them. I do not want them okay. on the table. Get it, okay. Matt? She does not like them, Pam, I am. But with only eight days before the wedding, things are looking way worse than green eggs and ham. I still have not found that song. My dad is not a sentimental person. I haven't found it either. I've asked a bunch of people. My dad danced with my mom to it at their wedding, and he said that he'd really like to dance with me to it at my wedding. And it's called All Kinds of Everything. Which is older than the DJ they've hired, and he has found all kinds of nothing. I understand that there isn't a lot of time with regards to our song and the song that I want for me and my dad. Like, what do you want me to do? I'm. Um... We'll just have to deal with it. I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, I don't think that they're going to be able to find the song, because I know that we couldn't. I really, really do. And I don't know if they're going to be able to find it. Ah, uh, here we go. Don't cry, honey. Yeah, that's kind of like saying, don't breathe, Pam. I'm, I'm dumbfounded this, this this I, I have no idea do. what to do. Let's call Jane and make a wish. OK. So Jane wastes no time and goes right to the source, Mr. Ed Ames himself. And you can't remember it at all. But the source is stumped. No wonder I can't find it. But Jane can't lose aim of the approaching wedding that's only seven days away, so she sets aside the musical interlude for a dramatic turn and brings Pam to meet her maker, her dressmaker, of course. Susan has done some work for some amazing people. Catherine Zeta-Jones, Richard Gere, Nelly Furtado, Marilyn Manson. So she's familiar with theatrics. Susan, meet Pam. And the reason we're here is because we have a problem with Pamela's dress. So let's, let's start by doing it up at the back. I am so glad that I made this wish because I'm going to have the most amazing and beautiful dress I could have possibly ever asked for. It, I'm so, so thankful that Jane has been so kind as to grant me a wish of fixing my dress and giving me a beautiful dream dress. So wish one is almost all sewn up, but since wish two's song search hit a sour note, Jane meets with a composer who has scored countless feature films and television. I've got a problem with a bride that she wants a first dance with her father to a specific song that I cannot find anywhere. So I've come up with the idea that knowing you, being a composer, that you could compose something that will completely set the mood. OK. Uh, you know, we could start with uh, ABC major is a really nice chord. Mm -hmm. Something like that as a little mm -hmm. theme. Does that sound like that? <laughs> Um, music is very evocative, isn't it? It is, yeah. Very, mm -hmm. because I lost my father 16 years ago, and to be writing a song for a bride and her father to dance to, um, yeah. Oh, dear. Onwards and upwards, my Indeed, stroke, please. Indeed, onwards and upwards. <laughs> Uh-oh, someone's starting to rub off on Jane. I miss my dad so much. And to have a special song? Yeah. I'd like that too. 
Today, Pam and her mother-in-law are tiptoeing through the tulips in search of the most perfect flowers ever. OK, so then this is the guy, but he doesn't have half the selection that he, does that on he usually does on Saturdays. No, absolutely not. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was going to have a huge selection because he usually has amazing but flowers. But always come Saturdays. I don't want some flowers. No, I don't. I would. All right. Let's relax and let's just have another look through. Okay, you know, I have to call Jane. Yeah. And either Pam like just has bad allergies or she's going to. Oh, yes. There she goes again. Hello. I'm at the flower market and I'm having a lot of problems with my flowers. I really need you to come and fulfill a wish of helping me with my flowers because it's just not working. OK. All right, Pam. in abundance, so I, I don't know what to do. Right. What's the budget for the table? I have $200 to work with flowers. for flowers. I just want to have beautiful flower bouquets for people to carry down the aisle and have at the hall. I don't care if they match. I just want nice flowers. Okay. And world peace and blankets for kittens everywhere. Let's go see what she's got. Okay. They're not orange. I mean, even if they had something like this, and then we take something like this, but and then we're that around it. It's a rainbow, Pam. We don't want a rainbow of color. Oh, I do. OK. Yeah, but I was hoping in the flowers. We don't want to make it a comedy show. We want to make it nice. Right. So Jane displays her bountiful bouquet of experience and shows her flower power. We'll see how big it is. Then we'll do seven, then we'll do nine. If you're going to do that, you've got to put two more. Like flower arranging 101. There we are. Table centerpieces, bouquets, boutonnieres. Wish granted? Wish granted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, 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 That's great. Happy bride. Happy bride. Yeah. For this moment, anyway. But the next day, with only three days to go until Pam's meltdown, I mean, her wedding, Jane asked Pam and her mother to meet her at a mysterious location. Pam, mm -hmm. I have spent days trying to find this song. Yeah. I have trolled the libraries. Yeah. I have even spoken to the man himself. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That was a conversation. Now, why are we here? I'm going to okay. introduce you to a very talented young man called Craig. And I've asked him to write you and your father a song, <gasps> especially for your wedding. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. But Pam manages to compose herself enough to meet the music composer. How are you getting on? Very well, actually. I mean, I, I've been toying around with a, a couple of melodies. <laughs> um... Listening to the song that the composer is creating is just it's amazing. It's everything that I could have hoped a song is going to be from my father and myself. And clearly, the apple doesn't fall far from the weeping willow. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I think I'm going to weep for the rest of the process. You got the theme bang on there, Mr. Music. The next day, with only one day before the wedding, is rehearsal day. And all the busy little mice are working hard. But something isn't quite right. So where's the bride? Oh, I don't know. I think that, I think that she's still taking the cake over to the hall. But Jane isn't quite as chipper about the missing couple, and she needs information. They just went to check in on the hall with last minute arrangements and realized that some of the things that people have done aren't right, and Pam wants to put them right. Okay, Sean and Debbie are gonna sit there. Here's Aunt Lois. Should that have been a wish? Should I have set it up for them? In the meantime, the show must go on, and Jane's there to keep it rolling. Perfect. Wait, no, it's not. No, it isn't. Oh, my goodness. How in the world did they let's do Let's just go this? table by table, Pam. Stop passing blame and let's just do it. I always wanted to be a standing bride. Oh, well, rehearsal smersal. But Pam and Matt seem like the type to just relax and wing it. I understand. We made a mistake. You telling me I made a okay. mistake does not fix the mistake. Okay, that's let's fine. So let's just keep going. Thank you. Or not. 
head was ready to explode when her wedding fairy tale fell apart around her. Thankfully, wedding fairy godmother Jane Dayas Hinch granted Pam and her groom Matt three wishes to defuse their wedding bomb. Wish one had Jane and her VIP tailor tinkering with Pam's tent of a wedding dress. She's gonna do my alterations, so I'm gonna have a beautiful dress. <laughs> Wish two had Jane in tears as she orchestrated a special piece of music for Pam and her father. Let's get this song written. And wish three had Jane exerting her flower power. Flower arranging 101. Today is the wedding day, and nothing says wedding nightmare like a no-show groom. A little concerned right now, uh, you're not here. While Michael hopes that Matt didn't get cold feet, Jane heads over to see how her bride is holding up, down on her hands and knees. Oh, I've come into a florist shop. Jane? Yeah. But Jane orders Pam away and grabs Wish 2 by the stems. Okay, so we're gonna go get ready. And Michael has finally caught up with Matt as he burns out over unity candles. Why do we why do we like wait till last minute for I have no idea why everything's till last minute. It's just this. I have no idea why I'm late everywhere. I just see you in your in your That's uh, thank you very much for getting that out. There we go. All right, I got your back. Whatever you need. But just go go right in there and, like, get it out. Like, but it's okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jane's up to her knees in fern. These were all supposed to be done yesterday. And an hour before the wedding? Mm-mm-mm. Is that it? Is that all I've got to work with? All right. Do you have just a small flat glass? Just something plain, simple, with, like a small pedestal flat for that? What are all those things you have back there? Yeah. So Matt's wound up tighter than a corset, and the mother of the bride is trying to rein in her daughter. Yeah, yeah like stuck on my back and it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Ouch, well, that, that tight. <laughs> well, you told me. OK, just hurry up, and we still need to do so many things, and the Shh, we have to get no, pictures of the photographer. Duh. Well, then hurry up. Okay. It's OK. <laughs> And on the other side of crazy town... We have a little issue right now. We don't know where any of the boutonnieres are and any of the flowers for anyone for the pictures. I'm never late. I'm never late. Like, I did 90. I did 90 through the city, no problem. I did bad an eye, shifted, I passed people. I went darkly through red lights. I cut a nun off today, I don't care. I can't be late. I'll not be late. That'll be my motto for the rest of my life. I'll not be late. Yeah. No one has the flowers here. No. No, no boutonnieres, no. no nothing. So it's okay. almost time to go, but Michael has one more question for Pam. Sorry to bother you right now. Um, we're just kind of wondering where the boutonnieres and all the flowers are for the pictures here. Are they at your house? Sorry, hold on. Here's, here's your husband, right, to be. You have them all there? OK. okay. Well, then, then all we'll we're going to do... We'll get them at do... church is we're gonna take the pictures here at home without them, and we'll have the pictures at the park with them. We'll just put all the boutonnieres and stuff on at the church, okay? Okay, cool. that's settled then. Oh, wait. No, okay. Oh, oh, just wait. I'm not having the flowers here. The guys look great. Okay. The guys look clean. Yeah. So I have some pictures here without them. Then we'll put them on. We can get pictures at the church putting them on. It'll be great, okay? My, the house is small. There's lots of people here. We don't need any more people, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you. Take, take it easy. Take some deep breaths. I've had some moments myself, but we'll be okay, okay? Okay. I'll see you at church. I love you. Okay, bye. And that's how you talk yeah. to my brother. <laughs> All right. How are we doing? Good, actually. What are you doing? Why don't you just, just do it? Because. And wish one is looking a okay. Okay, gorgeous. Is it good? <laughs> that is the dress. I hope Matt likes it. What is the not to like? Let's complete Wow, those bouquets look really good. Those turned out really nicely. awaits us there. Now I'd like everyone to rise and welcome the bride and groom. <laughs> Jane 
Jane did the most amazing job on my dress. It was absolutely perfect. It flowed beautifully. I'm speechless about my dress. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. I absolutely loved the flowers in the end. They, they fit beautifully. They, they couldn't have been any other way. So that's two fabulous wishes down and one very important one to go. Oh yeah, this should be good. That dad, I have had a song specifically written and composed, and I would like to ask you to please now dance with me the first dance as a newly wed wife to this song. There are times like these when the world is all asleep. And tears? We've all shed some tears today, but it's all been in happiness. Father-daughter song was so amazing. I absolutely loved it. I mean, I could not ask for a better song in the world. It was wonderful. I'm sure you're scared, but I have to say there are so many things that tell me. I will never forget Pam and Matt's wedding. They've taught me that hugging is good. Hug at every opportunity you can. Oh my God, I've been blessed with an angel, the fact that she's been here. It has been absolutely amazing, and I could never ask for a better wedding, even if I had a million dollars in order to spend on it. I don't think you can do it any better than we did it. Nope. Did I find it emotional? You bet. I would give anything to dance with my dad. Very emotional day. Very, emo very tiring day. Yeah. You all right? I'm okay now. Elisa and Kevin's wedding has totally blown a fuse. It's crazy. The bride is having a power failure. I have people telling me it's gonna be no big deal, so. And the groom's lights are on, but nobody's home. Will super wedding planner Jane be able to amp up their wedding? Jane, there's no power. Am I having a nightmare? Or will she be left feeling overexposed? Hi. Uh, what made you want to do a nude wedding? I cannot believe where I've been or what I've seen. These lights are really heavy. I just hope the sconce doesn't rip off the wall. Kevin and Elisa's wedding plans were falling apart. <laughs> and Kevin is leaving the whole mess for Elisa to clean up. I don't know what's going on. I'm tired. I leave it up to you. Yes. But our broken bride-to-be is ready to burst. I have to do all the planning and it's so much pressure. I have people telling me, like, you know, you're going to think back and it's going to be no big deal. But it is a big deal because Elisa spells her name with a big capital type A. It's my only wedding. And right now, her only wedding is 14 days away, and they have issues. We don't have a ceremony location. And why is that, you may ask? We want Chloe to be the ring bearer. And a lot of the places don't allow dogs. But Elise is afraid the entire wedding has gone to the dogs, and Kevin has totally gone astray. I get really tired having to be the one to always organize. To be fair, Kevin's been very, very busy. Tie number one. Actually, this is pretty nice. Tie number two. This is nice. Hey, fancy boy, here's an idea. Go for the white one. I like to go shopping. And this sharply dressed man is causing more ruffles. OK, so your outfit, how much is it going to cost? 1200 Your suit? Mm -hmm. The suit is actually going to cost more than my wedding dress. To me, that's unbelievable. OK, forget about the suit. Don't talk about the suit. At least they can always go home and relax after all the shopping and planning. Oh, no, that's right. They can't. Right after our wedding, we can move into our new home. I feel that there's too much on our plate. She's stressing out right now. It's completely nuts. Well, lucky for them, wedding doctor Jane Deus Hinch and her nuptial nurse Michael make house calls. And Dr. Jane's special potion of three wishes will vaccinate this dog of a wedding. 
I got your wedding SOS. We really need help. How long is it to your wedding? Two weeks. I like a challenge. Perfect, because here's a good one. We don't have a location yet. <laughs> oh, hilarious. What's this then? Just the reception. reception. So you've got to find somewhere to actually have a ceremony. We have to have outdoor, about 200, 250 people, and we'll allow Chloe to be there. That's right, your turn, Kevin. Tell Jane about the dog. We actually want her to be the ring bearer. OK. They have no venue, and this is all because of their dog, Chloe. How ridiculous. Oh, sorry, Oscar, no offence. Hmm. What else have we got? But our dog lovers trot on with their list of ill-conceived plans. A wedding cake pinata, a mystery dinner. And Jane absorbs the horror. Yes, I'm worried. That's what you're telling me you think is wrong? Now, I'm going to go through my list and see what else we can come up with. OK. There really is just two weeks left. Feeling very nervous, very stressed. About time, Kevin. Meanwhile, Jane writes and writes and writes some more. Writing up that board, my hand cramped. It was massive. <gasps> oh, man. Feel the draft from Kevin's eyes. The very first thing we have to do is get a ceremony site. We have to book it, we have to get a contract. Jane, can you help us with that, please? Whoa, cool those jets, sister. Can we get to the bottom? Because I only do three wishes. You've got your vows to do. Your photographer, what do you need final numbers for? You're glazing over and we're only on the fifth line. This is ridiculous. I need some water. <laughs> you wanted Chloe to be able to come down oh, with yes. the rings. Does she need training to do that? Guys, I don't think we could fit anything more in if we tried. Have I missed anything? And then the voice of reason chimes in. We were thinking of having these life-size cutouts of us. Yeah, that's pretty useful. There is so much to do on there in such a short space of time. But as you know, I'm a fairy godmother. There are your three wishes. Thank you. Choose them wisely. And now that she has those wishes in her sweaty paws, Elisa tries again with that first wish. We need to go look at a few places, and we're really hoping that you can come with us. If that one goes wrong, then our whole wedding will go wrong. Oscar, want to go look at sites? That's how long this has taken. Poor boy's gone to sleep. There's only 14 days left, and it just seems so unrealistic, we need her help so badly. This wedding, it's a comedy of errors. No, it's not a comedy at all. It's, it's a horror or a tragedy. Their wedding is only 10 days away, and Elisa and Kevin need to find a ceremony location. So for wish one, they've asked Jane to tag along to explore one of the options their uh, friend has suggested. <laughs> you sure this is the right place? There's nothing else down there, it's just... Mmm, pea soup, anyone? Yeah, OK, you know, who dreamt this one up? I never imagined I'd walk down the aisle at a place that looked like that. Since we're scouting a location for a wedding and not a B-horror flick, option one is a stinker. And so Jane packs up her dignity and joins them on an RV adventure to scope out another rather remote possibility. Oh, well, this is pretty. I don't know, it looks like there's a little arch there. Oh, yes, to the naked eye, it's looking dandy. But have you met Mr. and Mrs. Skintastic? Hi. Hi, welcome to Bear Oaks Family Nature's Park. Hi. Hi. I don't actually quite know where to look. You're looking to do a wedding here. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I cannot believe where I've been or what I've seen. Looks like someone didn't read the park description all that carefully. Hmm. Nice work, kids. Excuse me, what does the wedding planner wear? We like to uh, stay close to nature. Yes. We are not coming here. Get that? Because I am not doing any weddings in a naturist park. We are in super panic mode, and we're so glad Jane's here. We, we need her. We don't know how we're going to pull it off. No nude weddings. Oh, well, we're going to miss you. Yeah, that's nude. I mean, I mean, nice. 
can we go now, please? I feel a bit overdressed. Jane has had quite enough of quicksand and one-eyed snakes. Hello, Tony, it's Jane. So she sweet talks a very important connection at the most exclusive venue in town. I need a favor from you. I need to use Eaton Hall for a wedding in two weeks' time. I know it's the height of wedding season. And you're dog friendly? Fantastic. They wanted a wow factor for their guests. Oh, my goodness. Wow. This will give them the biggest wow factor they've ever had. Oh, Isn't that pretty. fabulous? <laughs> but Jane hasn't revealed the best part. I think you'd like this. Oh, my goodness. When it came out, I was like, oh, but now it's like, oh, <laughs> no. It's right against the water. And the good thing is, there aren't any naked people walking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Jane, Jane came through 110%. It was everything that we ever wanted. I didn't even think it would be possible. Water. Beautiful castle building in the back, and then columns. <laughs> oh, the columns. They could have had their ceremony, their reception, everything here, if they'd have asked me earlier. But never mind. But today, with only six days to go, Elisa tries to stitch together the remnants of her wedding, and her pal Eni leads the quilting bee. I can take care of the musicians. I can take care of decorating the hall. What is the life-size cutouts? What is that about? I honestly don't know how I would have handled the situation in a calm or sane manner if it wasn't for her. So thankfully, Elisa has her pals to help out, because Kevin is distracted by something shiny. And when he finally makes it home... Kevin! You're late. How good of you to drop by? He may as well head straight for the doghouse. Have you done anything on the board yet? Um... Mm, not yet. I haven't done that yet. So Kevin leaves with his tail between his legs and tries to accomplish something high on the list of priorities. Rein in the ring bearer. Trickly, sit, sit. Set. Boy, come. Boy. No way. Oh, no. Boy, boy. And it's not going so well. Boy, come. Chloe, one. Kevin, zero. Guess I need some professional help. Yeah, maybe. But what about getting the dog trained? So do we smell a wish? I think that there are other things we need wish help for more. But Kevin turns against his master and cashes in wish two. You want to cash in a wish to train the dog as a ring bearer? I've been trying to train her on my own, but uh, didn't have any luck with that. This was the biggest waste of a wish ever. The dog has more sense than them. So Jane has called the Emperor on the no-clothes thingy, and even though she thinks their wish too is a mutt, she's game to shift this puppy into gear, and someone's got her back. I've brought in my personal dog trainer. <laughs> we're gonna start off using some nice, yummy cheese, and we're gonna call this our target. So here we go. Chloe, tug it, tug it. No, where's the cheese? And there she goes. No. I'm tired. <laughs> I haven't been running for cheese. Would you like to load the target now? Sure. OK. OK, Kevin, think hard. Cheese in hand, then cheese on red thing. <whistles> Who's a good boy? Jane finally gets Chloe to focus on the fromage. Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Tug it. Oh. And our little fighter's getting strong now. <laughs> good girl. I think you'll be in good shape for the wedding. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. But Jane's not so sure. I'll probably walk down and give the rings. At least there's a piece of cheese in it for you, Jane. Later on that day, Kevin feels confident that Chloe's up to snuff, so he reignites his love affair with accessories. Actually, this is pretty nice. You like that? Yeah. Here we have a white on white. That's nice. Classic room's tie. Preference? Yeah, I think I like that one. This one's nice. Thank you. Meanwhile, Elisa and Eni pick up his slack and where they left off. You should just do a final count on the uh, centerpieces. Taking the ivory 
It's nice, yeah. That's my decision. Yeah, my decision. Yeah, this is really nice, too. It, it's quite groomly. Which one do you like? Surely Elisa would like a groom that cares about more than silk blends and Windsor nods. Okay. So you got one tie? Yep. And now he's spent. So it's nap time for Shopping Boy. Good thing Eenie's on board. Eenie. She cleared up her schedule. She dropped so many things. She's helped me contact so many vendors. She's helped me organize days. She's helped me visit locations. Oh, what happened? There was a bag of candles here. Lights. Five boxes of them. Uh, we can put that with the candelabras because they'll need to be together. Oh, the games. We need to bring the games. Is there anything else that you can think of? We just have to load all the centerpieces, put them in bags, and load them in our cars, and drive all the way to Mississauga to drop them off. She knew how busy I was, and she just offered to help. But the next day, with only four days to the wedding, our fairy godmother comes to check on Elisa's and Eenie's progress. The programs. We still need to do that, actually. Transportation. No. Music. We haven't done that yet. Have we got a final number? Actually, no. Is this giving you concern? Because it's giving me a great deal of concern. I couldn't believe that they hadn't done this, they hadn't done that. We're only talking four days here. I know. Is this going to come together? It will. Great. Cake. DJ. Kevin to write his speech. Oh, wedding. Saturday. Run out of time. <laughs> yeah? We are that close. Am I being too hard? They're actually scaring me. Unless they burn some midnight oil, they're not going to make it. Nothing like a bit of pressure there, then. Bridal gifts. I'm going to get them all putters and engrave their names on the putters. When's this, Kevin? Have, have you got more days in the week than me? And Elisa's gifts? I'd also like to add a special gift for Amy. And actually, I'd like to make that our final wish. What? Did we just hear a list of things they really need? I need a cup of tea. Amy. I just can't believe how much she's put aside last minute for me, and I appreciate it so much. And I really don't think she knows. Like, I really don't think she knows. And I want her to know. I wish for Ene. A wish to give a gift for a friend, because she's helped so much with this wedding. She needs to help a bit more. But Jane takes her leave to work on her surprise wish for Amy, while our dynamic duo tool around with a backdrop for the head table. Oh, does it look like a curtain? You know those, you know those laundry lines? That look? Looks like a laundry line. That's great. Oh, what are you doing? Oh! I'm just getting tired. Oh, do you want me to hold it and then you, you do this? No. Oh, looks like a mess. Look at this. You know what? I didn't think it was going to be like this either. Does it look tacky? Um, yeah, but... <laughs> Don't say that. It's not pretty, and it's not professional, and it looks like... It looks like a kindergarten classroom job. OK. There. Yeah, that looks great. Screw it. Let's just use a wish for this. That would be your fourth wish? Eh. Nice try, kids. Because with only three days before the wedding, Jane the Gourmand has cooked up a fab wish three for Eenie. She okay. loves fine dining. I thought of you. Mm. Massimo is one of the best chefs in the city. So while our top chef prepares a special feast fit for a queenie, Jane waits to spring the surprise. She has no idea whatsoever. <laughs> Hello! The reason you're here is because Elisa wanted to thank you Aww. for all the hard work you're doing for the wedding. Aww. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> oh, complete what? surprise. <laughs> nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. This is totally exclusive to us, so if you want to dance on the tables, you can. This is such a treat. Cheers. Thank you. We're not working tomorrow, are we? <laughs> Better drink up, ladies, because dinner is on. Oh, oh yes. wow. wow. Look at this. That looks delicious. <laughs> like we say at home, buon appetito. Oh, grazie. 
the lamb is so good. A little time for you to Thank relax. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Alisa, wish granted? Absolutely. Thank you, Jane. My pleasure. I think that Jane went far and beyond, gave us a chance to have a break and just enjoy each other. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. on your wedding day. Very fruity. Very. He is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alisa and Kevin's wedding was a circus of horrors until ringmaster Jane Dayas Hinch came to save the day. Can we go now, please? I feel a bit overdressed. For their first wish, Jane found them a ceremony venue where clothing is not optional. Wish 2 had Chloe the ring-bearing dog on the right track. Yay! Good girl, Chloe! And the bride used Wish 3 for TLC for a BFF. This is such a treat! Today is the wedding day, and every wedding needs a bride, but... Jane, I need a wedding SOS now. Elisa had a few problems with her dress. Fortunately, I know which ties to pull and which ones to do. Bear with me, Elisa. So Jane ties up loose ends with Elisa. Right, now we've got it. It looked perfect. And the groom... is ready to shine in all his customized $1,200 suit glory. Where's uh, Eugene? But the bloom is quickly off the rose when Fancy Boy can't find the rings. We are waiting for the best man. Kevin seems quite agitated, actually. He's quite nervous. He's definitely on edge. But with Detective Jane hot on the case of missing men and missing jewelry, no stone is left unturned. We have the rings. And now, so does the ring bearer. We have rings. We have cheese. And Michael has bubbles. Who doesn't have their bubbles? Yeah, we need bubbles. We're celebrating today. Bubbles over here. There you go, doll. Bubbles over here. They're like hotcakes. Get them while you can. There we go. All right, nice catch. We're all good. Everyone got bubbles? Don't do it yet. So Jane assembles the rest of the players and motors to get them to their places. Three minutes to spare. Oh, wow. If you can make your way down, please. This way. Well, somebody told me once it was a four o'clock wedding. And then the bride is ready to roll. Well, Kevin and Elisa, can you believe that you made it here today? I, Kevin, take you, Elisa, just as you are. I will strive to be a sensitive, gentle, and godly wife. And now it's time for another couple to keep the promise. I've done that with Chloe 30 times. Did she do it on the day? Mm. <laughs> Let's try again. Mm. Chloe, please. You did this perfect so many times. My only advice is never work with animals and children. <laughs> Third time looking. Okay. Chloe, where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Chloe, you running down the aisle with the rings? Beautiful. Let's see that one again, kids. <laughs> Everything went off without a hitch. And everybody's really happy. And everybody is synchronized. Kevin and Elisa have had the wedding of their dreams. Everything was beautiful. Exactly what we wanted. Chloe came down. It was funny. I think everybody enjoyed it. Was it was hilarious. Yeah. Jane was fabulous. She's a professional, and she knew exactly when we needed the help. And I don't think I could have done it without Jane. <laughs>